the awareness, and solutions to empower you up and out of narcissistic abuse. Please know this video is about absolutely any narcissist in your life. All the signs apply to any toxic relationship such as a spouse, lover, family member, neighbor, or friend, anyone. So without further ado, here are eight signs to know that you are suffering narcissistic abuse. One, your relationship is not kind, caring, or sane. Toxic relationships can be very confusing at times, making it difficult to know who is who in the zoo. This happens because a toxic person will spin it back on you, blame you, and will not be accountable. Remember, if someone hurts you and is not capable of a genuine apology, and you keep hanging out with this person, they'll continue to hurt you. They'll never be remorseful, and of course, will continue the same behavior. The truth is, people either have a decent character, or they don't. You can't change them for who they are. People like this simply do not have the resources to grant us a healthy, loving, and happy life, but we do. Two, you're dealing with immature behavior and give up pieces of yourself to comply. A hallmark of narcissistic relationships is the person gets bent out of shape on hairline triggers that mature adults just don't get upset about. Also, they believe they're entitled to and expect preferential treatment and can be nasty, demanding, punishing, and even explosive if they don't receive it. Are there things that you would normally be free to talk about to anyone, but the same topic may be unacceptable or risky with this particular person? And why do you feel so? Maybe if this person doesn't get their own way, they'll abandon you or threaten to leave you. And again, you start doing things outside of your comfort and value systems to stop this from happening. Three, you're angry, disjointed, and are behaving in ways that you normally don't. This is an important question. How do you feel with this person in relation to everyday dealings with other people? If you know you have integrity, can listen, have empathy, are capable of having sane conversations and get along with most people in your life, and yet there's this person who brings out the worst in you. This is generally because your boundaries are being violated and the normal modes of human operations don't stand. The circular arguments you're having make your head spin because they go around and round on unrelated tangents, points that make no sense. Narcissists state how disloyal your accusations of them are when confronted, or they argue with you to manipulate you into something unwholesome. Four, you find yourself trying to prove that you're a good person. Because the narcissist is regularly accusing you of all the things that they are and do, such as lacking integrity and love and care for people, being unfaithful, lying, making it all about yourself, wanting to use people for your own gain and more, naturally, you'll be incensed and try extremely hard to prove and convince them otherwise. This is another deadly hook that narcissists can get you enmeshed with them on. If you believe that your integrity, character, well-being, and safety is dependent on what other people think of you, then you're susceptible to this narcissistic behavior. Five, you are mopping up the messes. Being connected with a narcissist has lots of drama, rough edges, and quite frankly means that disasters are always looming. Narcissists usually aren't good with detail, accountability, or sensibility. They fly high, seeking narcissistic supply and acclaim with little to no thought for doing the right thing. If your life is connected with one of these people, it's usual that you will be paying their fines, sorting out their messes and dramas, and even lying for them to cover their tracks. It's like this analogy. As you're watering their back lawn trying to keep it green, yours gets parched and turns brown and dies. This is how narcissistics roll, and this is what happens to the sensible, well-meaning, responsible people who narcissists like to recruit into their lives. By walking away from people like this, we can heal and restart our life with self-responsibility. Six, your boundaries are being disintegrated. It's extremely common for people with poor boundaries to get involved with narcissists. You find it difficult to speak up, stand up for yourself, or hold boundaries with this particular person. And when you try to do so, are you often criticized, rejected, abandoned, or punished? You're likely dealing with a narcissist. As a result of that, you try to minimize the trauma and mayhem that breaks out by giving up on trying to assert your needs. Or maybe because you've dissolved into so many feelings of powerlessness, helplessness, and despair that you find yourself begging or pleading for your boundaries to be respected. Discovering that the narcissist has zero empathy for you and won't comply, it takes you down into an even deeper place of helplessness. Seven, you feel addicted, disjointed, and manic. Perverse addiction happens with narcissists. This is also known as trauma bonding. To find out more, you can check out the links in the description. 
Do you feel manic and unable to stop trying to contact or hook back up with a narcissist? Even when you know how much you continually get hurt by doing so, we can be horrified by how addicted we are to someone who treats us so terribly. It just doesn't make logical sense. It is of course very serious when it gets to a stage where we simply can't talk ourselves out of doing the actions that we know are putting ourselves back into the fire to get burnt again. And eight, you're suffering from abuse symptoms. Things are now very serious. When your emotional inner being has been screaming out for our attention and we haven't as yet pulled away and turned inwards to heal, then we start breaking down physically as well. It's likely that anxiety and depression and even greater issues like fibromyalgia, adrenal issues, PTSD, and agoraphobia start to develop. You lose interest in the activities, people, and self-care that used to grant you energy as the toxic person in your life takes up more and more of your energy and focus. The shame and pain become so great that we may start hiding out from the world, lying to people, covering up, and feeling even more isolated in our traumatic feelings and symptoms. This is when we have to ask ourselves, how bad does it have to get before we awaken to the truth? There Share your values and doesn't care for your feelings. Doing on this and this Sunday. is not a healthy. Hoping everybody Hello. having a blessed week. Yo, definitely excited about today's show. Y'all know what time it is. It's a trauma series, part seven. And today, this is a serious topic right here. I've bef definitely been on both sides of the fence when it comes to narcissism, being narcissistic and narcissism behavior and the personalities and stuff like that. So a definitely real topic, you know what I'm saying? I'm definitely excited about today. So without any further ado, you know, she's always on the show, <laughs> psycho educational therapist, Natalie Collier. Yo, I'm pretty sure, yo, I'm excited about what the information she has today. Yo, and I'm just thankful to be here today. And for the people that may have, you know, nobody may, nobody may have told you that they love you today. You may be going through, you might feel like you're in a dark place and it's only you. We want to let you know you're not alone and that's the purpose of the show. So with it, without any further ado, I want to present to y'all, Miss Natalie Collier. How you feeling? Hello, hello. How are y'all? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited about today. Narcissism, <laughs> narcissistic. We living in the world now. Well, you know, it is. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. I think it's gonna be a great topic because you're gonna get to kind of understand about some true characteristics of narcissism, like classic DSM type stuff. Right. But we'll also get to see how society kind of borderlines that now with with some of the same characteristics although everyone may not fall into that same that, that same depth um right. so they may display some some narcissistic tendencies um but a true classic narcissist is they don't they don't make changes you know and and it is one of the hardest personality disorders to treat right um and and for some odd reason, you know, you know, some some mental health disorders they get so far gone that you know it's like treating a psychopath, you know, because there are some some tendencies of person of this personality disorder that would mirror um, some psychopathic, you know, psychopath. You know, Ted Bundy was a psychopath, right? But he was also a classic narcissist, so it's not treatable. Um, in most cases. And um, so I'm just really excited to be here. I'm really excited to talk about it. I'm, I'm, you know, right. been prepping for this. Okay. So it's a lot of information. So as I always like to tell people, when we start the show, if I say anything, I'm not going on my way to offend you or a loved one. You know, information is just what it is. And sometimes people get offended by what they hear. Right. Um, and, you know, I guess it's one of those things that the shoe fits. I guess you wear it. Um, but we don't go out our way to personally attack or offend anybody at, at any time. Right. Um, and it is a lot of information. So I'll be kind of glancing back and forth, just making sure I got, you know, all my stuff in order um, to give you guys the best information possible. But I'm super excited to be here. Uh, and that's the thing right there. And it's a misconception about narcissism and narcissistic. People think that just means like, OK, you got an ego. Or you may be, you know, stuck up or stuff like that. But it's much deeper than that. When we really tap into it, 
It doesn't ha- necessarily have to be about, you know, you staring in the mirror all day. So no. I'm definitely excited about that because a lot of people, they may be toxic to other people and not realize, or they may be suffering from narcissism and may not realize. So I'm definitely excited about the information that will be shared today. And hopefully somebody will change or somebody's eyes might be open because it's like, and it's almost like, it's, it's almost like a sickness because like you said, it's like, this is forever process. It's like, it's no cure, no one fix all no. for this. So no. it's like, this is an ongoing process. So I'm definitely excited about, about today. Yes, I'm very excited. So I guess we'll kind of dive right in. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk about narcissistic personality disorder. It is a disorder. It is a personality disorder. It falls under the cluster B. Of personality disorder. So you have cluster A, cluster B, cluster C. There's 10 different personality disorders. And they all are compiled in, in, in different clusters. Okay. So when it comes to narcissistic personality disorder, what we like to say that it is, hey girl, I'm so glad you joined. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> and and yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate y'all appreciate me being here um so it's it's a blessing and it's an honor to be able to share information right. and, and i I'm, I'm thankful for that um but it is a cluster b personality disorder and so cluster b's are mostly characterized by uh dramatic emotional or unpredictable behaviors that's how we classify that cluster b and so the other personality disorders that would class that would fall into that is your narcissism, your borderline, your antisocial, and your histrionic. So those are all personality disorders. Now they all have their own little little things, right? But narcissism falls also under that. Um, and we know that with narcissism, it actually is starts like the onset, because we always say in mental health, everything has an onset. So with narcissism or narcissistic personality disorder, um, and PD normally has an onset time of early adolescent to early adulthood. So when we say adolescent, you might start to see that mirror in about 15, 15, 16. They've been working on it for a while, but you'll start to actually see some traits of that starting to emerge at around 15, 16, or you'll see it in, in their early 20s, early adulthood. Um, and so we'll just talk about some of the symptoms of a narcissist right quick. Right, okay. Extreme negative reactions to criticism. Extreme, like extreme. You could say the slightest thing, and it's immediate defense. They're very angry. They're very injured. They can't believe that you did that. Why would you say that? Like, they don't see the need for self-improvement. Right. So any kind of criticism is never going to be good enough. Like, you, right. there, there's no criticism to, to improve. Every time you criticize, it is a detriment to the ego. Wow. So they're always going to be defensive. They're never going to be open to criticism. And like I said, the slightest minuscule piece of criticism for food for thought is going to injure their ego. Um, And they also have a very elevated sense of importance. So if you know someone who is, I'm extremely an important individual, look at me, look at me, look at me, you know, it's all about me, I'm here, I have arrived. Extreme elevated sense of importance is another symptom or, you know, trait of of, uh, narcissistic personality disorder and grandiose thoughts of success. Wow. That is one of the biggest success for them is like the driving force. And we'll kind of get more into that a little later, but that gives them everything that they kind of need to have some of these other things. So they kind of mask behind success, but even though they may be successful, they'll make their success seem like it's so much bigger and greater than it really is, you know, which is a sad thing because, you know, I always tell people success is what we define it to be. You know, like we talked about before, you could be 
you know, having being a mother and being a wife could be a level of success for someone. You know, someone running a small business can be success for them. You know, somebody being able to build their own home is success for them. So success is defined differently. I think when we get into society's level of, of success, you know, that can cause us a lot of mental health, you know, things to, to, to kind of tinker in our minds and make us self doubt and question ourselves. But they have an extreme grandiose sense of success and, and they need you to know it. So that's another symptom of narcissistic personality disorder. And they also have an excessive, an excessive need for admiration. And that's why this is such a very unique, when we talk about, like I said, we're going to talk about, you know, the classic sense. And we're also going to talk about that superficial, maybe you mirror some tendencies, but you're not really a true, a true narcissist. But it's very interesting because in the social media world, we see that need for admiration. Oh, I posted something and you didn't like it. Right. They will let people know you didn't see that. You didn't like it. Right. Why you didn't like it? Well, I was sitting right next to you when you posted it. So why did I need to like it? I was right here. You You know, (laughs) (laughs) but it's that extreme sense. It's it's excessive. It's going to be in everything they do. Um, they'll say things and and do things for praise. You know they'll they'll run down their accolades. And there's nothing wrong with you know if you're in a you know in a, in a conversation where you're you're talking about certain things right. and your accolades happen to come up. But if you're going out your way to constantly showboat yourself, it's because you're in a constant need for admiration, and that is a true classic symptom of of narcissistic behavior. Um, or personality disorder. <clears throat> right. And then they have a strong sense of entitlement. Wow. Very strong sense of entitlement. Right. No is not a fact. <laughs> and it, 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 the word no does not exist in their vocabulary. Right. And, and they're serious about that. And, and what's interesting is a lot of people have been in relationships with narcissists and I've heard stories from women who have been in relationships with with narcissistic men now I haven't heard more so of men saying they've been in relationships with narcissistic women however there is a guy I can't think of his name but he does a YouTube channel and that's all he talks about is narcissism and he was actually in a relationship with a narcissistic woman and it was very interesting to hear him kind of talk about that other side of the coin because a lot of times we see it more prevalently in men than we see it in women and that, that, so, that's, go ahead. Oh, no, that's the thing I was going to say, because you touched on a lot of key points right there. But I think because people don't have the information about narcissism, right, because they're mm-hmm. not educated on it. I think right. a lot of men, they contributed to she's strong will or she's a strong woman. But it's like it's a thin line between like confidence and her being a strong woman and her being a narcissist. And then, like you said, it becomes toxic in a relationship. But you also oh, yeah. have said a key point earlier where you said um, oversensitive. So like sometimes when you give somebody advice or you're trying to critique them or give them, you know, to help them out, they get offended. Right. People may say, I'm not a narcissist. I just I'm sensitive or I don't play with my feelings. And we mask it instead of dealing with the truth, because it's like, who are we that we can't right. be corrected or we can't get better and stuff like that? Right. But when narcissists, when it comes to that, narcissists have very, very uh, unique ways of how they deal with people. So if you injure the ego, there's going to be a punishment on the other side of that because they're very hot and cold with with what I like to call the victim. Because that's really what people are. And they don't even realize a lot of times later on, they'll start to realize, okay. I'm not crazy. This isn't me. This is them. And but they're already wrapped in because narcissists, I gotta, I gotta be able, I gotta go to the to the to the uh to the um the way they worded it. I absolutely loved it. But um narcissists are very charming. 
Wow. They're very persuasive. Right. They usually have um, the physical appearance is usually something that they very, very much take pride in. They take pride in how they look, how they smell, what they drive. They, 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 because everything is grandiose. Right. Because they believe that about themselves. So they're always going to be, you know, well together on the outside. Right. And when they do speak, it's going to be very charming, very persuasive. They're, 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 they're master manipulators. They're master manipulators. But that's how people usually get wrapped in. We're not talking about somebody who just, you know, is walking down the street looking regular degla all the day all the time. These people are together. You know what I'm saying? This is what they do. Right. Like, because, not, because we'll get into it, but they need a supply. So they know what to do to get what they need. So if you're trying to set the trap, then you got to look the part. Ain't nobody coming over to the shady man. Right. You know, we ain't coming over to the van with the, with the blackout, you know, blackout on the windows. You know, we know that, they, hey, that's the kidnapping van. That's the, that's the human traffic van. Somebody going to do something. Some me van. Right. Ain't nobody walking over there. But if you driving, you know, a Honda, what is it? A Honda, a Honda Genesis, or you driving, you know, brand new, you know, uh, BMWs, Mercedes Benz is out here. You know, you 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 step out well groomed, smelling good, looking good. You go, oh, okay, right. you know, wow. you're not paying attention. Right, that's the thing. You said a powerful thing right there, and that just led me to another point. It's like right mm -hmm. you said. The, the um predators they don't look like predators so it's like the no. bad wolf they're not telling you i'm the wolf or the devil himself they disguise no. themselves right they look groomed and this is the stuff that we want so it's like if i if i if our value is in material things or our value are in things they look like they appear to have everything they, they look like they got the confidence they got the clothes they got the smell of it they drive in the car they got the story the match so they're yeah. running their resume down it's like this person almost seems superior. It's like they they put themselves on a higher level than you, wow. and we accept it. We and accept we that. We so do. it's like even in that, it's like ain't that how sometimes some women they get taken advantage of, and you know pimps and different things like that. It's similar to the same thing. They come in like one way, and then mm -hmm. they start breaking you down. And now once they break you down, they got control of your mind. Now right. they start to show you who who they really are. So that's interesting. Right. It is. And, and, and you made a point, you know, uh, the devil masquerades himself as an angel of light. Right. You know, so and we in 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 the act can say this and the Bible say that the devil was beautiful. I mean, he is a beautiful creature. I mean, he's made of all the beautiful stones of the earth, and you know, he's got bagpipes and all these wonderful things. So it's like that's kind of how I look at a narcissist. You know what I'm saying? Like you have the appearance of something, but the inside is rotten. The inside is rotten. It's rotten. It's very, it's very, very rotten. And you know, we people who know who've been in relationships with narcissists, if you think you're going somewhere, <laughs> baby, it's it's about to be if you about to be in for the run of your life. Because they're not gonna let you go. Not they're not either. gonna let you go. They're gonna gaslight you, and that's something that narcissists. And I, I put the gaslighting and the the manipulation together because they're masters of manipulation, and they gaslight to weaken and destabilize their victims. Right. And then we go so that they can gain control over the victim. And they're often hot and cold. So that goes back to that punishment aspect. So um, I'm, I, I'll dumb it down to make it easy. You know, I want to make sure I, I use as many layman terms as, as possible um, so that everybody kind of can follow along with me. Um, but say, say you're, 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 you're dating someone and you're talking to someone, right? And they're like, oh, you know, I want to go away this weekend. And, you know, this is what I got planned. And you're like, hey, I can't do it. I can't do it. Right. They're going to go cold on you. If they go cold on you, they get upset because you can't make it. Now, he doesn't talk to you or she doesn't talk to you for six, seven days. Wow. 
They're guilt tripping you about what you couldn't do. Right. But then when you were trying to, and a lot of times the victims will try to correct that. Right. You know, I'm sorry I'll make it up to you because it's extreme behavior with them. Like, it's not like, oh, okay, I get it. You know, you couldn't make it. We'll, we'll get an opportunity to do something at another time. No, right. this is that, that anger that, okay, well, you're not going to come and make you pay for it. Right. <laughs> And then when you turn around and like, oh my gosh, I haven't talked to this person in seven days. They're, they're really giving me the cold shoulder. They're really upset about this. You decide you want to play into that. Now they got you back on the hook. Wow. And they're going to see you on their terms when they want you, not when, not when you want it. Narcissists, everything is on their time, not your time. And if you can't accommodate their time, and they usually have a supply, like we talked about the supply, right? Right. You ain't the only one. Oh, wow. You can go and get them out of the way. No, we got to rotate. See, because narcissists are extremely, very, believe it or not, they're the most insecure people right. on the inside. Facts. They are so traumatized and so broken that you being able to get into past a surface level with them is going to be extremely difficult. Everything is going to be surface level with them. So they're going to keep a supply of people because when you keep a supply of people, I can be hot and cold with you, can be hot and cold with them, and it keeps people from ever really getting too close. So when they feel like you're getting too close, they'll find a reason to push you away. But then they're going to eventually want you to come back. Right. It's getting good already. It's getting <laughs> good. It's getting good because it happens every day. And it's like I said, I've been the victim. I've been the one that's victimized. And I've been in both sides where it's like, you know, you're thinking with the girl, like you said, she wants A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. Trying to get with her, you know what I'm saying? She's looking good. Yo, I'm, I'm gonna make it happen. Yo, maybe I might have a happy ending, right? But right. it's like you don't do it the way she said, you don't do it to the letter. Now you ghosted. So it's like, what did I do wrong? Now you're blowing her up. Can I make it up to you? This, that, and the third. Yeah, but it's like, all right, once you fix that, it goes here now. So it's like it's kind of you jumping hoops, like you make it through the first round. Now you got to go through the first, second round, third round, but it's always an elimination. It's like the moment you can't come through, mm -hmm. you're done. So it's like, you know, so the victim is like, yo, I got to make it happen because I don't want to lose this person. I don't want to. Yeah. And then at the same time, where you were talking about the insecurities and um how the victim and the victimizing that. I've mm -hmm. been that person where I'm broken on right. the inside. I don't feel I don't feel secure in myself. So it's like now I'm looking at things. I'm looking at numbers where I got all these women. I got dot, dot, dot. But mm -hmm. like you said, it's like you're not you're not letting them see the real you. It's sub it's sub it's subsurface. So it's like now the moment they're trying to get too close, back up because like yo, because inside I don't want to be hurt again. I don't want to be vulnerable for you to turn out like the last one. I don't want to be let down again. So it's like we put a wall up, and in mm -hmm. their mind, oh, he got it going on. He's you know that 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 that. But it's like right. really, I'm falling apart. Right. So I've been I've been on both sides and it's definitely real. And it, and, it, and it is a very <laughs> my husband came in from cutting grass and he oh, I, so the cruise. <laughs> it check the camera. Okay. Um he had messed up my name. No, sure. no. no. Right. <laughs> I believe I, I get what you're saying, but but it is. And being that victim, you because because of the presentation, right? right? Because of the presentation, because what we assume this person is about. See, narcissists are very interesting because they give you just enough to make you feel some kind of way, but really, it's like the trap, right? Because the, they say it without really saying it, right? It's kind of like the. I don't want to say open-ended, but it's kind of like that. I gave you this 
So now you can assume this. But when it all falls down, it's like, I didn't, I didn't say anything. I didn't give you anything. I didn't lead you anywhere. You led yourself. And it's kind of like, you have to think back on it. It's like, where was the substance really at? Because there never really was. Never was. Never was. You, the victim, are in your mind thinking all these different things. But when you try to dig deep into that, they're, they're not going to give you anything. They're only going to give you what they need to give you when they feel like you're out the door. Right. To wheel you back in. To wheel you back in. But narcissists, in my personal opinion, um, we do know that studies have linked um, children that were verbally abused by their mothers. That has been linked to both uh, borderline personality and it's also been linked to narcissistic personality disorder. Wow. Um, But I think the biggest thing is the environment. Right. So we'll kind of get back to the mothers, but this is kind of like a two way, a two way fold for me, because this is something that we as parents, we have to be very careful of because in the environment, either access adoration or excessive criticism that is poorly attuned to the child's experience is going to resonate with them. So when parents want to do that extra all the time, right? We don't, we're not honest with our children. Right. So if, if we're constantly saying, oh, you're the smartest, you're the greatest, you're the best, you're this, you're that, and that's all you're ever feeding them, you're going to breed a narcissistic personality behavior in them, which is probably going to end up being NPD. You just made a point. I don't want to go too far. I don't want to get off base. I don't want to throw you off your train of thought. But like, okay, the parent may say, I want them to be confident. I want them to be, you know, self-sufficient. Blah, blah, blah. But it's a thin line. How yeah. easy is it to slip into confidence? When does it stop being confidence and becomes narcissism? When you never give your children criticism and opportunity for improvement. You know, you got those you got those parents that, you know, they want their children to go to these elite schools, right? right. Um, you're going to do this. You're going to you're you're going to be this is it, and they're going to push for it, and they're going to push for it, and they're going to push for it. And then the minute that you don't excel, it is excessive criticism on the other side of that. I can't believe you failed that test. I can't believe you know. Are you dumb? You couldn't do that. You couldn't complete that task. You stupid. Right. So now it's it's extreme on both ends. Wow. There's never a healthy balance. Right, right, right. It's okay to tell our kids, you know what? You're going to be great. But greatness requires hard work. Hard work. But you're also going to have some failure moments. Of it because failure is life's best lesson. If we never fail, we'll never know what it's like to succeed. Facts. That's a fact right there. And again, so you have to be, you have to, so you do, you have to be, I'm gonna let you get into it, but you have to be careful how you how you approach and the information you put in the children because they're sponges and they're just soaking it up. Right. And that's the thing, because you said it starts, the signs start about 15. Adolescent yeah. moments, but let me ask: When is the damage taking place? Like around what age is the is the foundation laid where the damage is already set in? I think it. Just, I think it, I think it really depends on when the damage was started, right? Because you know we know that it doesn't take but twenty one days to create a habit. So if I've been being talked down to, you know, for X amount of time. Or I'm only being praised when I'm super excelling. See, you got to think about these are the parents that are the, these are the parents that are also hot and cold. Right. They're trying to teach. See, we talk about how children learn from with less, not so much of what we say, but what we do. 
So when you're giving that extreme criticism, you're also going to give that cold shoulder. You're also going to do it in your body language, how you handle them, how you treat them. You know, if your child fails at something, do you say, hey, it's okay to fail. Give them a hug. I love you. You're still you're still amazing. Everything's not going to be perfect all the time. You're not going to be 100 percent at everything every day. Wow. Even doctors go to work and they're not 100 percent every day. He may have had a great surgery year. He may not have had one year, the day after. Right. You know what I'm saying? Nah, so I think it's 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 not just about what we say, but it's about the body language and the approach that is that is also encompassed in that. Wow. And, and that's deep because a lot of parents, right? The child may not agree, or they may do something that we don't agree with. Mm-hmm. Aaron is pissed off. I'm pissed off. You didn't yeah. do what I told you to do. Bop, 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 bop. But it's like, it, that's the same thing in a different way, where it's like, where if you would have did what I did, you get the praise. When you don't take my advice, now I'm going to talk down on you. you that, 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 I'm tearing you down because you didn't do what I want you to do. Yeah. I never looked at it that way until you just said that. So that's that's deep as well in itself. And, 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 and it's a very it's a very sad thing. It's It really is. And so what they were trying to say, and I, and I kind of I'll give it what the article actually says. Um, so what the article likes to say is that um, narcissistic people often had narcissistic parents. That's not always the case, but they like to say that this is something that is traded. Um, but parents who didn't offer them any real buildup or any real substance. Their parents wanted them to be great so they could be the parent of a great person, be the best artist, the smartest student, etc. Often narcissistic people were often neglected as their parents were so focused on themselves, they could not attune to meet their child's needs emotionally, mentally. And the child was only useful to the parents when the child served a purpose that the parents could benefit from. So often people with narcissistic personality disorder um, alternated their their parents, alternated them between emotional hunger towards their children and disinterest. So the child is often hungry for their attention, but the parents are also very disinterested. But the parents, you know, and it's it's a very sad thing. That's why we always talk about the nurturing aspect for children between the ages of one and five is the most important stages of a child's life. Whether people believe it or not, children need their mother the most between ages one and five, because that is the core part of the nurturing aspect. Now, yes, you're going to nurture your children more as they continue to grow. We continue to nurture them all the way up and then even, you know, you, you never you parent your kids the day you die. I don't care what nobody say about that. My mother's the child. So I know. But you got it. They got to have that core. I don't know if anybody's ever read the, the book, The Boy That Was Raised as a Dog. No. It's a heartbreaking story. It, it, it's going to tear you up. But you're talking about a mother that abused a child. And, and, you know, there's, 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 he's not the only story, but, you know, you hear about the kid that, you know, his mother used to make him take scalding hot bath waters with bleach. She would put him in the basement. When he did something wrong, she would make him touch a hot stove. Right. You know, he would never treated the siblings like that, just him. So you got to think about what that does. Now, this person, of course, is meant to therapy. Everybody who goes through this is not going to develop a disorder. Right. You know, not all traumas are going to lead people to become offenders. But you got to think about like, wow, you know, right. they right. have a percent chance because of what they've been through. What they've been through. Right. You know, even serial killers. Victims to psychopaths. A lot of them were victimized First. in many different ways. It's not an over. People just don't wake up one day and say, "You know what? I'm gonna start killing animals at 12. Right. I'm gonna become a serial killer in my mid 20s, early 30s. This is, what I'm, this is what I'm setting my life up for. This is what I'm doing. Like right. nobody wakes up like that. Right. So something has to happen 
you know, to, to create enough trauma, to desensitize enough, to, to cognitively turn, turn a person's brain off, to make them that cold. That's, that's real right there. So let me ask you real quick, right? Because in the developing years, a child, right? They still a child. They don't have the process. They can't process like an adult, right? But no. now, even with the internet and certain situations, right? Kids mm-hmm. get exposed too early to certain things, right? Yes. It was like it's the same thing with this. It was like, okay, they're damaged. So they go, they go through a trauma, right? They're too young. Mm-hmm. They may be they may see a narcissist toxic relationship, but you know, a lot of times you're dating, you know, you might not be at the stage where, you know, I want to make sure this is right before I bring them around my kids. So it's like the, the mother, she may be going through toxic relationships. So she's with a boyfriend. They're mm-hmm. toxic. They're, the kids is watching this young age. Right. Mm-hmm. From that, seeing his parent, Mother, whether mother or father, because you know there's a lot of split families nowadays. So it could be the father on the weekends or mother when he's with the mom or whatever. In some some cases, it could be toxic on both sides. So it's like in the, in the mother's household, her and the new boyfriend is toxic. Mm-hmm. In the father's house, him and the um his girlfriend is toxic. So this becomes the norm to them, and now they're dealing with this damage. So because they're narcissistic and damage the parents. They're taking this out on the child. So now the child is dealing with this on both sides. How does the child process to know, or is it like how far, how is it too, when is it too far gone? Where it's like they become so desensitized to it that this is all I know. Um, I think a lot of times with children, you'll see them have their own cries for help. I think it's the people that are around them, whether or not they choose to pay attention. Um. You know, back then it used to be teachers. You know, you're coming to school, you messed up, what's going on? You know, but the system is broken. The system really is broken for children. Um, I feel I feel bad for the children that are in state custody. You know, I feel bad for those children. A lot of times, I'm not saying there aren't great foster parents out there, but a lot of times those parents, you know, a lot of them are in it for the check. Right. And kids can go into foster care and get treated worse than they were treated in the home that they were in. Right. When I was in Tennessee in 2014, they had 150 kids die in state custody. Nobody wanted to answer the question, what happened to these children? Right. But children are resilient. So if we if, if the right people step in and they're actually getting the help they need. They can, they can bounce back, but if there's no if there's no safe haven, there's no help. They have a very strong. I like to say it's one or two outcomes: either they're going to become the offender, or they're going to grow up and despise that, and the and the trauma is going to is going to have a major hindrance on them in their life and their ability to to socialize, open up, be vulnerable. There's going to be a lot of brokenness about them. And there may be there may be some substance abuse issues there. Um, they may develop antisocial personality disorder. You know, just can't deal with people. Right. So there's there's a lot of things that can happen that can go wrong. Right. But I think that I think I think that a lot of times with children, I think if it's something that's been going on for a long period of time. I think if if it started off in, you know, your smaller digit numbers were getting the double digit numbers, a lot of times they've accepted that this is their situation. And that's sad. Right. Right. Because if, if, if it's been going on that long and no one's helping, you know, that's why I say I even look at R. Kelly is a level of a narcissist. But his mother failed to nurture him and protect him as the only parent. When he first came to her about sexual assault with the, with the man that lived in the neighborhood. But then to turn around and get sexually assaulted by your cousin, a female cousin. So that lets you know that sexual assault was something that was prevalent within their family. Nobody addressed it. Swept it under the rug. 
R. Kelly couldn't read. He couldn't write. He didn't have a certain level of maturity. It was like he was stunted. Right. He finds connection with young girls. Right. His case is, and, I, and I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in case by case basis because everybody is 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 different. To you know, there may be things that are that are similar, but a lot of times there are things that make people, even if they're in the same bracket, very different. Right. But I think R. Kelly's just, he, he's a classic case. His his pedophilia is, because he is a pedophile, but it's very different to me. Because I see him as, in his mind, he hasn't, he hasn't grown in certain areas. But then in other areas, he exemplifies manhood. He has grandiose behavior and, right. you know, look at me, look at me, my success. But then certain elements about him are very childlike. Right. But nobody protected him. Nobody right. protected him and nobody got him help. And now here he is today about to lose his entire legacy because there was no protection. Right. And even in some of his lyrics, he was crying out. Sometimes I believe the fame. So. People don't know about what I'm going through behind. They just see the fame. They don't know what it's like. I just lost a loved one. I think I wish in a couple other songs that he put. Um, mm -hmm. I think I'm a, I'm the greatest. There's a couple songs mm -hmm. where he talked about like yo outside of the fame, y'all just see this this lifestyle. I'm right. falling apart. Yeah, and a lot of them are. No. A lot of them are. That's you know, you can mask yourself. You can mask yourself with what you have. But when the lights turn off and the day is over. Right. And, and that's the thing. Even with social media, you see people that they're posting stuff. Look at me. Look at the new car. I got the new job. I'm in Jamaica. I'm taking trips. Look at the new wedding ring. I'm dressed, mm -hmm. I'm fly every day. They they dolled up, they face beat to the to the max. Guys up there, they got their jewelry, they showing their money, this, that, and the third. We got it going on. Right. But offline, they're crying out. Offline, they don't have not one person they can talk to. They don't have one person they can trust. They don't have one person that loves them genuinely. Because the, everybody's they're so they're so hiding behind the facade that people is caught up in the stuff and not the person. So it's like, even in social media, it's like, it becomes almost like you can see through the fog. You can see through the smoke. It's like people up here, they, they're per perpetuating this lifestyle. Like everything is all good. But if everything was all good, you wouldn't be up here all day. You wouldn't be posting all day. You would be enjoying the things that you have. You would be enjoying the relationship. That's the goals. You would be enjoying the car that you just got. You would be enjoying the job, but it's like, sometimes it's like a cry out for attention, not only attention. Some right. people are crying out for real help. Like, yo, I, I don't have people that check on me. I don't have people that look, that, 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 yo, you okay? Everything all right with you? Or you, you appreciate it. You're important. Right. So now they substitute that with the likes. They said, so now not only are you, some people say, yo, it's just the internet. I don't know you for real. Then you have some people that's dealing with mental stuff. We're just like, we're friends for real. We've been friends for seven years. And now you looking like it ain't that serious. It's just the end of it. Right. They done killed you. What do you mean it ain't that serious? We've been friends. I've been following you since 2011. Yeah. And it's like, because to them, this has became their reality. This is their world. But it's like they have mental things going on. And we don't know. You know, this is why, this, and, and 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 I will say that the reason I I classify and we can kind of talk a little bit about you know what I like to call the superficial narcissism of social media. The reason I say that that is so dangerous right. is because when the click with 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 reality TV and the click with social media, you know, social media is not. It can be used one or two ways. Right. It can be used as a benefit. It can be used as a hindrance. Right. It's a hindrance because a lot of people don't really know 
how to help you socialize anymore because of the internet. Right. So you can go on the internet and be whoever you want to be. Right. And that's scary to a certain extent. Right. Right. Because it's it's creating the the grandiose facade of success that you want people to see. Right. We become self-absorbed in that reality versus the real reality that we're in. The real reality we're in isn't isn't fun. You ever seen that? You seen the movie Gamer? Gamer, I think so. I think I've seen Gamer. You know when when um, Cruz, you that's like Gerard Butler. He was he was like in prison, but the way it was they were in prison, he had to put on like this suit, and then a guy would control him like a video game. But it was his real life. Like if he died in the game, he, he was gonna lose his life. Right, right, but right. Then the jobs. For like the regular people, they went to work and they would let somebody control them. It's like being a sim. Right. But being a real life sim and somebody else sitting at home behind a computer and they can make you sleep with whoever they want to. They can make you do whatever they want to do. While, you know what I'm saying? And that's kind of like what I think about when I think about social media. I don't want to deal with the real reality of something. So I'm going to go on here. Right. That's real. And then if you like my post a hundred times, I got a hundred likes. It's a little bit of validation. But now that becomes a drug. So now I need to do it again. And that's why you see people get so risque in their behaviors. Even their OnlyFans pages. It started out like this. Now it's all the way old. They done took it to the extreme. They took it to some strange for some change. And they're talking about shutting it down. I don't know if they're going to or what, but you see how it kind of but see people are trying to say, oh, well, my online life is not my real life. No. It's it's you you've merged those lines. You married it. They, 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 they've merged together. Because what you put on the internet is never going away. It's always going to be there. Always. And, and that's the danger part of it. Because like back in the oh. day, you think before the internet, right? Mm-hmm. You're, in a, you're in the neighborhood. Get a reputation or you you know, you you know might be the creep. You might, right. be, you might be the risque girl or whatever the case may be. You might be the violent person. Back in the day, they send you out of town. Recreate yourself. Lay low. Stay out of trouble. I had a cousin, true story. He got in some trouble in New York. The judge told him. We were young, so he probably was 12, 13. The judge told him you got two options. Before that, back in the day, they sent you to the military a long time ago. Yeah. He's 12, 13. He can't go to the military. So the judge told him, he said, yo, I want you out of New York State. So he came down to North Carolina, right? And he came down, moved with us. And it's like, it's like you come down there, and it's like the advice in the family was, you got a new start. You yeah. stay out of trouble. Don't don't bring no attention to yourself. Don't do nothing crazy. So it's like the same thing like you were saying. It's like where a person can have a reputation, they go somewhere else. They could be who they want to be. But back then, there was no way to validate it. So like, so like you know, if somebody pops up new on the scene, it's like, yo, you're looking at them sketchy at first. Like, I don't know this joke. So you got to watch them a while. Now it's like, okay, but you're still not getting the real them. Because like, you know, this person could have been a serial killer in, a, in another state. This person could be married and got a family that he left, you know, and now he meets a woman and now she finds out later all this stuff. But this is before the Internet. So now when we talk about mm-hmm. the dangers of the Internet, you don't have you don't have to leave. It's like in your neighbor, people that know you, they're not following you. They don't block you. Everybody done blocked you like that person's a fool. Right. But you got the whole World Wide Web. So to them, like you, you could become instant. I mean, Internet famous. With a bunch of strangers, and you could be a pedophile, you could be a, a psychopath, you could be a murderer, you right. could be the killer, and nobody knows you could be the rapist, the abuser. And it's like now all these people are following you, and it's like it looks like as far as social media is concerned, you're getting all the likes, you got the clout, you're doing you putting all the, the pictures, you're posing with people, you're in front of cars, you're in restaurants, right. you're in nice places. 
He's right. got to be pretty good. He's, you know, people looking from the outside, he's lit. Yeah. This man could be put, um, um, pretty much like preying on young girls. He could be preying on, on abused women. He could be preying mm -hmm. on women with low esteem. And it's like he's going from city to city or town to town, abusing these women, taking advantage of them. And now the right. story breaks. Right. And now it's 150 right. women been abused. Right. right. That part. That part. And, and and it is, you know, and that's why you gotta be you gotta be so careful. You you really do. Like you you really you really gotta use your common sense a little bit, and you know think about things and think things through. Um, healthy social interaction still includes being able to do it tangibly, face to face. Right. That's important. But if you know someone that that. that exemplifies, you know, any kind of personality disorder, you need to run. You need to run. And and you need to check yourself. You know, I, I like to tell people, try to check yourself. You know, if you posting, you know, I get it, you know, people post pictures and share, they share their lives with their friends. And, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it becomes a problem when you watch how people shift and what they're posting. Right, right, right. Like if you're always going to be true to yourself on the internet and people who know you know that that's genuinely you, then you're okay. You know, and you got friends and family, people are distant. That's why I said social media is cool for those very things. You know, you can share your stuff with the people that you want to share it with. Right. But if it's always, you know, everything's always glittered, glammed, done up, you know, promoted to be grandiose all the time, then you're clearly doing it for the recognition of what you have. And that is the thing about a narcissist. Narcissists are praised, again, by what they possess. Right. <clears throat> the accolade. This is what kind of car I got. Or I got this card and I turn around and I got this card. Right. You know, or I, I played, I played, you know, I went to this college. I played these sports. You know, I'm doing this job. I make X amount of money. Right. You know. But a lot of times with narcissists, you'll see some things that don't add up right. or things that you want to question. But you never do for some odd reason. Or when you do, they have to answer those specific things. But it's always somebody else's fault. Right. right. It's never their fault. Kind it's always way. somebody else's fault. Oh, well, that relationship didn't work because she did, or it didn't work because he, you know, he, he, out. Mm -mm. so they all just, but you'll notice that, 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 that narcissists don't have, they don't have preferences. Right. They'll be all over the place. Wow. They're all over the place. And I'm not saying that you, you know, you should have preferences, but usually people who 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 know what they like, they'll date people if they're dating and they don't, you know, it doesn't work out with this person. You may see somebody else that kind of, you know, similar. Similar or, you know, may have this two or two or three things that kind of stand out like the other person because this is what they like. But with narcissists, it's gonna look like the dang on rainbow. <laughs> yeah, that's real. That, that's definitely real. And the because it's just about supply. It's but a lot of times, narcissists want people that are already insecure. Right. They want who they know is broken. Right. They ain't gonna deal with a strong person because strong person ain't gonna deal with it. A healthy person ain't gonna deal with it. Right. They realize they uh, uh this is too much, and they'll run. They'll run from you, right? right. But they want the weak, right? You know, and and so that's that's easy to manipulate because now I can pull off all my grandiose. I can I can lay this on. I can manipulate you, right? Because you you broken you 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 looking for. You thinking, oh wow, you know, I'm I done came up in the world. Right. Oh, you didn't. Wow. 
Wow. You about to you about to go through some things. But narcissists will share things with you at certain times or certain heights right. that will give you a glimpse maybe into their their reasoning or their understanding of their behavior if you're kind of educated in that department. Right. Um, you may be like, oh, okay, I get it. Because they lack empathy. Wow. Narcissists lack empathy. They don't care about you. Nothing you got going on. They ain't gonna ask you questions about yourself. They don't. They don't care about. It. See. They don't care about you like that. And when a person cannot display empathy at all, that's when you start trading your psychopathic behavior. Right. That's when you need to worry yeah. because everything for them is a tool. Having children, even getting married, it feeds the facade. Right. But it's not a real healthy, genuine, true connection. Right. Now, you got some narcissists that know how to mirror, mirror behavior, which I like to call. They know how to, how to mirror that, but they actually tangibly don't feel it. Right. They don't feel it. That's the thing right there is like, as you're saying that, so many different points in my life where I've been, I've been the narcissist, I've been the person that's abused and I've been the person abused. But it's like one thing that I learned along the way, right? You said it at the beginning. You said even um, the devil himself, right? And it's like, so when we talk about God and we talk about spirituality and it's like the Bible teaches us to be humble, to be low. And that's like one of the hardest things that I had to deal right. with coming from being a music artist, being in the industry, to being humble. And it was like, you know, giving up the image, giving up the, you know, just showing that vulnerability and showing that side. Right. So it was like, you know, over time, it was like, it was a, it was one phase where it was like, you know, like you were saying, with numbers and women and blah, blah, blah. But it's like over time, I still was never satisfied. I still was never happy. I still felt empty. And then I realized because I was broken and damaged, I was hurting other people. So that was like the first phase of my, me becoming who I am or coming out of who I used to be. But the flip side now is because I realized, OK, I, I was a narcissist or, you know, if they didn't jump the way I wanted. I would replace them or because I had a state. I wound up flipping to the other side of this, the spectrum. And that's how I wound up becoming the abused because now I felt like, let me have a little patience. Let me show them, let me prove to them that I'm not that person I used to be. And in the wrong hands, that's dangerous when you're trying to prove to somebody in the wrong hands, because it's like now, okay, if you, if you love me, you'll do this. Now yeah. you jump off the, you jump off the cliff. They like, if you, if you don't die, then that means we're supposed to be together. And because I'm low esteem, because I'm damaged, because I'm broken, it's worth the shot. Well, if I don't die, then this is then this is real. But it's like, like you said, it's all the facade. So I went through that phase where it's like, mm -hmm. now I want to love correct. I want to be with somebody, but I'm looking for just anybody. Like you said, you were talking about preferences. It was like anybody that wants me, anybody that looks, because I'm looking in the mirror, I'm filthy. I don't like what I see. I'm a terrible person. So anybody that looks at me and says, yo, I'm willing to give it a shot. To me, it's like, yo, you look past all my faults, all my flaws. Right. And right. you want to kick it with me? Right. I had to get out of that quick. I learned fast. You got to have a standard. You got to have a standard because like some of these people that's looking, they see the brokenness, brokenness, brokenness in you. Okay. So that's why they, that's why they, they like you. They see the insecurity in you. So it's like, so I had to find a balance. But then on the other side, God has a way where it's like, we just won an award at the time, right? Everybody knows us in the city. And it's like, you know, people telling me, yo, you out for self, you're selfish, bop, 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 bop. But in my heart, in my mind, it's like, yo, I'm a team player. I want everybody to win, bop, bop, bop. But it's like voices and people, what they said about me became like a, um, almost like a, a chain. It bounded me down because I was so worried about what people are going to think. What are they going to say? Dot, dot, dot. So now, again, I'm giving up me, who I am, to show them, see, I'm not like that. I can be a team player. I've been a team player the whole time. 
Right. But God had to God had to put me through some certain storms to show me like, yo, OK, boom. If you don't humble yourself in certain ways, it's going to destroy you because like mm-hmm. as you go up. It's going to be easier to get. It's going to be more more tangible. So it's like whether it's substance abuse, whether it's women, you might, you might catch AIDS. If it's a sub, you might overdose. Whatever it is, it's like if you don't check this, it can right. get out of hand. So God had to take me. So it was like in the height of my career, it's like my image is everything. I'm an artist. But it's like one thing I've learned before I get into that part is like even in that, it's like you on flyers. Everybody know you. You don't know these people. Right. You might get into a situation where it's like, yo, all right, you show up at this show. It's going down. And now you start thinking like, yo, I don't even know who my enemies are now. So then it's like a lot of these artists, they get anxiety, they get depression, they get through, they go through all that. I was there because it was like, now you know, you become a public figure. It's like you out and people coming up to you now, everybody you looking at, you trying to balance, is this a friend or anything? Right. Or foe, or they're trying to harm me, and then you got to go through deception. Some people link into you because they want the opportunity. They see opportunity with you. So if I connect, let me befriend you. So you go through a lot of betrayal, a lot of things like that. And it made me an introvert over the years. It's like, so when I go out now, I suffer from PSTD. It's like, don't don't run up on me. Don't come up too close. Don't do that because I've been in situations where people done got killed. I've seen people get stabbed. I've seen people get hit with bottles and stuff like that. So it's like when I'm in crowds, it's like I got to be social because people know me. I'm an artist. I do the show. But it's like in my mind, I'm dealing with depression. I'm dealing with anxiety. I'm dealing with, Lord, don't make me kill somebody tonight because I don't. I'm coming home to my family. You know what I'm saying? Certain situations can put you to the point where it's like you do what you do. So it's like all this stuff is going through my mind. So I find it easier with social media. It's like, yo, I can keep in touch with people because I'm really not like a yo get together type of person. It's like I might show up, but nine times out of ten, but it's not personal because it's like right. certain crowds depends on who's going to be there. Da da da. Do I need to take it? Do I need to take something with me? Then, as I'm thinking, as a father, if I got to take something with me, I don't need to be there. So it's like I got different responsibilities, but it's like all this stuff comes from like different traumas. So I say that to say, so as I'm going through that now, so I'm becoming less social more introverted, less social, more introverted. I'm just beginning to see things clearer now. So then from there, it's like we win the award. Everybody knows you, this, that, and the third. God had to break me down. It's like, because if I don't break you down, you're going to think it's you. So it's like everything was happening. Like everybody knew me. We Like I said, we don't won the awards. We've been nominated two years straight. Every city we're going to, we know y'all. Everybody knows Sion. But it's like, I know at that time, if the opportunities would arise, I would have destroyed myself. Mentally, I wasn't prepared. Emotionally, I was insecure. So I'd have been drugging it up. I would have been enjoying all the festivities, all the women that could have landed me wherever. I would have been investing my money in the wrong things, being loyal to the wrong people. Right. So I say that to say, God allowed this to happen. And it was one of the hardest things, but it's like, that's when I knew, like, yo, when you try to do right, Mm-hmm. It's like, as well, long as you're doing the wrong thing, it's, oh, all good. it's easy. But the moment you start trying to do the right thing, that's when all hell starts breaking loose. So it's like now I got things going on in the, you know, you know, in the industry, certain things on my reputation, whatever the case may be. I say, you know what? I'm gonna just take a break from the industry. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go back to school. So I wind up going to school, but this is the kicker, right? So. Oh. Previously, I lost my license, a whole lot of stuff going on at the time. So I used to have to ride the bus. And it's like back then, it's like, yo, okay, you don't ride the bus. You just don't ride the city bus. Right? So it's like, not only are you riding the city bus, like y'all just won an award. You're Scion. Dop, dop, dop. So it's like in the beginning, it was like, yo, they're going to laugh at me. I'm embarrassed. I done fell off. All this stuff in my mind. But God had to show me, like, because of the facade. Because of the the everything is over exaggerated, this right. right here is gonna connect you to people that you never thought you could connect with because now people are gonna see the human side of you. They're gonna see the real you. So it's like I remember in the beginning, I used to be so embarrassed, like I hope nobody sees me. I hope nobody sees me. 13 months, and this is the thing, right? I used to have to ride the bus because I live in Cary. 
So I would ride an hour and a half to Raleigh. I get to Raleigh, get on the bus, and I would ride the bus an hour and a half to my school. So I'm on the bus three hours there, three hours back. And then the, the, the apartment I was in, we had like a big suitcase that I used to have to carry around. And I was cutting hair and doing hair. So I had mannequins and all types of stuff. So it's like, you can't not see this, this hip hop black looking dude walking down the street with this. So it was like, and then I have a walk. So it was like, people could just spot me out the crowd. Like, yo, that's how I knew how to walk. So it was right. like, I'm riding the bus and I'm walking. Cause now I got to walk from the bus stop to school. And people, burr, burr, burr. yo, sorry, what the hell are you doing? Yo, I'm in school. And people looking like you in school, like, yo, you, you about to, y'all about to take off. Why are you, why are you walking for one? You a rapper, you supposed to have money, you supposed to have all this stuff. Yeah. It's like, yo, so it was like embarrassing at first, but it was like during that part, I'm praying and I'm like, God, I don't understand. Around this time I'm getting in the ministry, you know, I'm starting at the bottom of the ministry, you know, bathroom cleaning, vacuuming, whatever needed to be do, I was serving. Mm-hmm. God was showing me, like, yo, it's in that. No matter how high you get, right, you can't never forget what it was like on the other side. So then from that, I started treating people different. It's like it didn't matter if you owned the building or if you worked in the building. I started treating right. people the same. It didn't matter no, if you had been doing it 20 years or if you just started because I know what it was like when I first started. So God put empathy in me. Funny story, mm-hmm. the testimony of it all. It's about 11th month, right? Where it's like, you know, certain people, they're going to joke. They got jokes in the beginning. Oh, he fell off. Yeah. About 11th month later, it's like people now, they're saying, yo, you're about to graduate. Because they're seeing me every day. They're seeing me going to school like, yo, you sticking with it. You sticking with it. They're seeing me every day. So by the 11th month, two months left. People mm-hmm. are now coming up to me, cops and everything. And this was the weird thing. I don't want to incriminate myself. But it's like I was smoking heavy. So right. like, when the cops is walking up to me, I'm thinking, ah, oh, damn, they don't smell the smoke. I'm going, it's going bad. You know what I'm saying? But they were like, yo, you're still doing it. So the cops start recognizing me. And I'm like, I don't want it. I don't want y'all to recognize me. But they were recognizing me for something totally different. So they like, so the 11th month or whatever, all of them are saying, yo, so how long you got left? So I begin to tell them eight months left. Then I start noticing I'm seeing more men down at the bus stop. And it's like, you know, now they got uniforms on. And it's like, yo, you start seeing them every day. And they're like, yo, bro, I ain't know what I wanted to do. But I seen you and I looked at you and it's like, if he could go back to school and be down here, I can be. So it's like, yo, even in that miss where I'm looking like, yo, right. people laughing at me, they're looking down at me, da, da, da. God still had other people looking and I was giving them inspiration. So it's like, when you look at it that way, it's like, I thank God for those moments because I used to I used to have a bad attitude. I used to have an ego. I was cocky. I always felt like, yo, I, you know, that the tension needs to be on me. I'm the man in the room. It allowed me to put myself in the lowest position in the room. And then when I start reading the Bible and it's like, yo, this is this is what God requires us. Like, yo, sit in the back. Don't put yourself in a position of power. Right. Go, you know, put yourself in your gift or make room for you. Right. It was like, you know, I show love to everybody now. And it's like, I thank God for that, that going through that, because that right. was one of the hardest parts of my life. It was like I went through an embarrassment. I went through all types of stuff. People, like I said, on my reputation, I went through a, a public breakup, all types of stuff. So it was like in that moment, I felt like giving up. But as the people started encouraging me, I didn't know if they could see. Like, yo, this dude going through it, like, yo, he, or whatever. But it's like, it would just be God would send certain people. And they would say, young man, you you just keep going. And it's like that thing I might have been dealing with, like, yo, I'm going to take my life. Like, yo, I, this don't make no sense. I got, I got, we got awards and I'm down here like this. Because it's like, you're not mine. Right. It's like, I should be up here. I should have, or I should have all this stuff. But I was losing everything. And then it's like, once God revealed it all to me, this is what he told me. He said, you can have all the stuff without me. It means nothing. And that's right. None of that money, none of that money, none of that material stuff, none of them friends, none of the entourage. If a bullet came right now for you, none of that's going to matter. If sickness came for you right now, none of that's going to matter. And then it's like he began to minister to me because it, it was uncomfortable. 
Right. God, I could have learned that you ain't have to take everything. You didn't have to put right. Me, you didn't have to do me like you that. You have to do me like that now. Like, <laughs> yo, God, you got me down bad now. But right. it's like, if I didn't put you there, you would never know about the voiceless. You would never feel the pain. You would have never looked twice. You would have never felt the pain. You would have yeah. walked by the person that was about to commit suicide. You would have kept going about the person that's headed on the wrong route. They may be about to go to jail. They might be dealing with drugs. It's like I had to put something right. inside of you where when you look at them, you see your pain in them. That's right. And now you can come and you can say, I see it. And you can, it don't even have to be in a, in a, a, a um, all spooky religious way. It could be yeah. something that's like them women told me. Yeah, you can make it. I don't know what you're going through, but you're going to come out of it. You're going to come out of it. And it's like, now I have a peace. Mm -hmm. where I still don't have everything that I want. I never sit up here and we say never, I got everything never, that we I never want. Will. We'll never have everything we want. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you one thing. I have everything I need. That's right. And, and, that's, and, never, that's, and that's the most important part about that. But I don't know, but, but, but we live in, in a society that's, that's why I said it's so shallow. You know, narcissistic personality disorder used to be something that was, you know, it wasn't rare enough to not exist, but it wasn't like everybody that you knew had, had you know, this this surface level. Right. That, like I said, you know, but we, we are breeding that because we care so much about consumerism. Right. We care so much about what other people say. Do you drive the car that you drive because you like it, or do you drive the car that you drive because other people are gonna like it? Do you live where you live because you like the house? Because if, if you buy a house for somebody else, you set with mortgage payments for somebody else, and then somebody else ain't coming to pay that bill. Right. You know, but we do things for show. For show. Right. You know. You, you having your wedding on TV. Why? Right. It's supposed to be sacred. Between a man and a woman and your family and God. Right. Number one, God. Oh, you gonna make $4.3 billion, you know, million dollars off of average off, off of off of airing it on TV. Like we have gotten to this point where everything has to be has to be seen. We have to represent it a certain way. It has to be a certain way. We have to look a certain way. We have to... It's never just about it being for the person. Never. never. And it really should just be about it being for us. Like I say, you know, I don't I don't have anything against anybody. If you... If you, you want to go buy a BMW or you want to go buy a BMW, buy it because you like it. Right. But still be humble about it. They'll be, be humble. The problem is we 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 lose that humble right. that you that you're very much talking about. Right. You need to be able to be humble to really enjoy success. Right. Because the failure of being humble in success is 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 a headway for a disaster. Exactly. And that's where you see those narcissistic people in those positions of power. Right. They're demeaning and and gaslighting their employees. Making them feel bad, treating them bad. You know, I like to say narcissists treat everybody like they peasants and they the king right. or they the queen. Everybody else is a peasant. Right. The, the, we are here to serve them. And that's not okay. Right. But we but see the problem with society is we feed into it. You want to really work on, you know, dealing with a narcissist, don't feed into it. Right. Because they're, 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 and I think too, a lot of times, you know, and, and, and it said it in the article, you know, being praised for extreme greatness or great things. Right. This is what you're great at, you know, and I'm going to praise you and I'm always going to give you affirmation with that, but I'm not going to, I'm going to disinterest everything else in your life. Right. right. So they learn to only, because children need to be affirmed and validated. They do need that. Right. Definitely. They're looking for your approval. 
So when they do something great, you do say, you know what, that's great. I'm proud of you. Good job. Right. But I'm not going to do that every single time. Right. Right. And I want my yeah, children yeah. to know the difference between you doing what you what you what what you should be doing. And I'm going to let you know, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. You know, I'm not going to go to the extreme with it. Right. But people should just love on their kids just to love on their kids just because you love your children. Right. Not because they had to do something to be great. Because what it does is it breeds that. Right. That's the grandiose. Because the parents put that in their mind. So I need the world to see me bigger than I am if they're going to give me that praise. They're starving for attention. Right. They're starving to be seen. But they don't want to show you the real them because I think that they because the shame and the guilt and the humiliation and the embarrassment of their brokenness is just it's just too unbearable. Like the brain can't handle being able to go there. It, it just can't. Right. You know, you think about you think about children. You know, who, 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 you know, their mothers are verbally abusing them or their parents, you know, want nothing to do with them. You know, I see you, right. you know, you live with your grandparents or whatever, but you never see them. Every time you see your parent, they, they, they got no interest. Right? They, they got no interest in talking to you. Right. Like, I can't imagine what that does to a child. Right. So I feel like narcissists are hurting on the inside. That child. Right. That child has never has never been given the validation to say, I empathize with I empathize with you. Right. And it's okay because somebody loves you. Somebody cares about you. Right. The problem is the people that get involved with narcissists, they want to try to heal them. That's what we're talking about wanting to heal and fix broken people. Wanting to take that on. That's why people get caught up in that cycle. Yeah. But they end up learning to have their own anxiety and their own self-doubt and their own insecurities because they let somebody else give them all of that. All of that. They, you know, they may have already had a little bit, but now they're just a shell of a human being when they leave there. Right. And they're going to go in that cycle at least three or four times before they get smart and be like, you know what? Let me get a body here. Let me get up out of here. Right. Like I said, and narcissists usually don't get married, but they do if it feeds the supply me. Right. Wow. wow. You know, if they think that they can do it and it's manageable and they can control it because they need to be in control. But if I can't control it, it ain't gonna go down. And they'll gas like you like that, you know. Wow. And they'll make you, oh, you know, you so pathetic, or you know. You don't love me. You don't care about me. You know, right. those kind of things that they like to say. Wow. And so, you know, that's really it's important that we, it, but we, but we will breed narcissists in the following generations because of the social media. Right. So even if we have superficial narcissist now, you have narcissistic tendencies, it's very superficial, we're eventually going to breed the next generation of narcissists. Wow. Because of, because of the, the social media. Right. You're giving children, you know, social media at what age? Too early. They're learning about shame and not getting enough light. And not being validated by the world, you know, in that context. Um, body shaming, you know, we, we've all, you know, anybody, that, you know, we've all been bullied at some point. Right. You know, in the 90s, if you didn't have no cool clothes, boy, you was going to get roasted every day when you went to school. Right. <laughs> but, that, but, but you see what I'm saying? It plays a level on the psyche about consumerism and, and needing to have something to be able to be accepted. So the story is not old. I believe this story goes all the way back to Jesus' time. There were poor people and there were wealthy people. Lazarus was at the gate begging for scraps. Right. 
So it's the story that's as old as time when it comes to that. But we have put too much emphasis on that. Hey, I think it's great if you're good at something and you, and you you know you do it for a living and you do it because you're passionate about it. That's great, right? But if you're doing it solely to get the attention of others and the appraisal and the approval of others, you're doing it for the wrong reason. Right. That's the thing you said a powerful thing, and it's um two points I want to make real quick off of what you just said. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, like you said, growing up young. You didn't have the fly clothes. You didn't have all this. How you get roasted? A lot of people they wind up turning to the wrong route because they didn't want to get picked on anymore. They pam their family might have not been able to afford them the stuff. You know, women they might have got with an older man to buy them some clothes or get their nails done, hair done, and stuff like that. Guys, man, yeah. they might have sold a drug or two to get the new shoes or to get a fresh cut and stuff like that. So it's like even those words, right? They shape. Where it's like you on a good path. You're trying to stay focused. Mm-hmm. But society, people are, you know, the, the, the majority, they oh, you don't, you're not dressed right. You're not this, that, and the third. If you're not secure in who you are, you can get off the path and wind up catching a drug charge. You can wind up getting raped. You can wind up becoming a prostitute stripper just off of that alone, just off of words of other people. Then on the flip side, it's like you look at like the artists, like the biggies and people like that, right? The same mm-hmm. thing, where it's like a lot of these people, they come from the, they come from the inner cities. They come from not having money. Now they're thrust in the fame. They're thrust in the celebrity. They're in the celebrity level now. So it's almost like, look at me, right? But the, to them, it's like they don't see the harm because it's like we're talking 30 years later, 20 years later. Right. After the baby. So when he was doing certain things, it didn't, it didn't shape overnight. But it's like no, now, it once everything became, look at me. Look at my car. You got a chain. My mm-hmm. chain is bigger than yours. You got 20 inch rims. I got 22. Oh, you got 22. Right. I got 24. And then it's like right. it just becomes a competition, right? That's but right. in the beginning, a lot of these people, they come from you're never going to be nothing. They come yeah. from getting picked on. You never had nothing. So they overcompensating with their insecurities. So let mm-hmm. me buy material things. Then yeah. the part B to it was the music industry. So now the music industry. They target these these people with low esteem. They target these people with a gift. Mm-hmm. It's like they lack in other things. And it's like certain things they look for. Okay, yo, you prone to, you know, um, get a felony or you got a record or you over here, you may be insecure or whatever, where they can manipulate it for their benefit. So on right. the one side, now they build you up, right? So it's like you got all this stuff where it's like a lot of people from the outside looking is like, yo, I want to be famous. I want to be like Rihanna. I want to be like Summer Walker. I want to be like Janae A. Right. Person. But it's like, then when right. you hear these people's story, it's like, I just want to be normal. I just want to be able to go to Walmart. I just want to <laughs> be able to go through Six Flags and just be That's a it. regular person. So it's and like I'll a lot be of them. Every day gone day when I go. Right. So now a lot of them, they develop anxiety. They develop all these depressions and stuff like that because it's like now they don't put you on an unrealistic plateau. Right. And it's like now you have to you have to continue to be that person. So it's like, OK, 10 years later, you're not selling records like you used to be. So now you walk, you walk, you work in a regular job or you might be selling houses. It could be the person that you're selling the house to. And they say, well, I see X, Y, Z. They selling houses now. They done fell off. Or they driving Uber. This right. person over here, he dot, 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 dot. But it's like, you know, I'm doing what I got to do. I maintain. So the pressure becomes now to keep up with this, this unrealistic thing. So now when we take social media involved in it, so it's like, if you don't have a certain amount of followers, you're not this. If you ain't viral, it doesn't matter. If you're not, you know, in the cool kids club, they would say, you're not you're not nothing so it's like people they still deal with the rejection they still deal with the insecurities because it's like okay i can't get accepted in the real world i can't get accepted in social media world so now these people become depressed now these people become you know they start dealing with their insecurities depression and anxiety and stuff like that but then you have the people us that see through the facade, like, okay, this is just the highlights. This is like a highlight reel, edited highlight reel. So it's like, they're just showing you the good parts, the good parts. 
But it's right. like every good, you know, it's a bad. But it's like if people don't realize that and they just focus on comparing themselves, then it's like you said, look at me. Look how great I am. Or I got I got you talk to somebody now. I got five thousand followers. I got sixty thousand followers. And it's like that's supposed to be like a validation of I'm important. Right. Whereas like at the same time, somebody could buy sixty thousand views or sixty thousand followers. Somebody may earn the 60,000 followers. It's not, it's still a gray area because there's no way to say, okay, you solidified, you made it. When somebody right. could easily buy it, that's no, that's no different than like the person that pulls up in the, um, let's say the Rolls Royce. He pulls right. up to the event. Everybody's looking off of face value. Oh, he must have money. He must have this. Right. But you don't know he leased it for the weekend. He rented yeah. it while he's in Atlanta. So now he's in Atlanta running around like, yo, I'm this superstar. Right. But it's like he's driving a Toyota Corolla. Back but, home. It, but it goes to show you the pressure that people pressure. feel the need to have to show that. And, right. and that's why I said, you know, it, it mirrors it mirrors that classic narcissism because they're doing it because they want to escape their own trauma. They're doing it to hide something. They're doing it to mask something. Right. Just like everybody else. Wow. But the problem is that we as society, in, 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 this, in this realm, in society, refuse to let people be where they are. Right. Everybody wants because, and, I, and I've always said it. You know, reality TV was the highlight for this, this, this whole thing. Right. Reality TV was the was the turning point for the superficial narcissism behavior that we see. Women need to start going to the grocery store wearing high heels, <laughs> being extra right. until love and hip hop. Until love and hip hop. Because because what we're doing is. We're not feeding the conscious brain. Right. We're not feeding this this portion here. We're feeding our subconscious. Subconscious. So that's why I always tell people what you ingest is going to affect you. You're not looking at it critically. If you're looking at it to enjoy it, it's going to feed that subconscious. Right. And the subconscious is going to bring it to the forefront and your behavior is going to change. And I can identify with that because I was one of those girls. Right. Oh, shoot. You know, we go into the grocery store looking cute. My husband said to me, where did you go? I got to go to Walmart. What you got to go to Walmart looking like that for? <laughs> huh? I said, what? What you mean? What you got to go to Walmart looking like that for? No, nah, this is how I go. No, that right. ain't how you big go. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it takes somebody else to see you, to catch you, for you to be like, Oh, wow. I don't do this all the time. Right. Or it's just like the girl that watches Maury, right? Better example, give it this way. Why you think your man cheating on you all of a sudden? Right. Who he been running around with? By his baby mama, this and the third. You know what I'm saying? But you wasn't thinking none of these thoughts. Until you, so you got the idea implanted in the brain. So we're breeding the clap, we're breeding the superficial narcissist because of the grandiose behavior. Right. Again, also you can think about it with with your followers. Um, you know, people I have an elevated level of importance. The more followers I have, the more important I feel. Right. You know, um excessive need for admiration. Let me post all this stuff. My cars, my house, I went on this trip, I did this, I did that. How many people have posted their animals? They got an animal blogger. They got an animal chain, you know, page. And everybody goes and they love to click the, you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> uh, I might not get it, but I can get it for my pet. And that makes me feel just as validated. Right. The, the We're one. looking for the world to esteem and approve us instead of being approved and validated by God. By God. But these people will develop the anxiety, the depression, some resentment when it doesn't work out the way they want it to. Right. In some cases, 
if they have a very active, healthy social life and good people in their quarter outside of that, they may be able to be okay. Right. But your classic narcissists, wow. they, they, they are a shell of the human being. They came into life when they were cognitively able to start deciphering already learned and trained as a, a shell of the human being. Wow. Okay. Let me ask that, you. That started for them in childhood. Right. And that was from the people that were supposed to be the most important people in their lives that are supposed to set the stage for them, that are supposed to give them what they need to have that balance. That's you know, the superficial narcissists are only creating problems for themselves that are going to give them some mental health issues. But the true narcissist truly is a psychopath. Already, right. He he, he, he or she is already on week. Wow. And they, go, and, and they are abusers. Right. They truly are the abusers. You know, your superficial narcissists like I said, they, they live on social media. They they, they want to be seen. They want to be heard. They want to be validated. They want to be accepted. They jumped into the game of the new swing of everything. Right. Like I said, you know, the, the loving hip hops, the Black Ink Crews, all these little keeping up with the Kardashians right. have kind of presented a lifestyle that the average person doesn't normally live. Right. Hell, but if you look at loving hip hop, some of them living less, living living a little worse than than regular folks. Right, <laughs> right. Especially you know, right. The Airbnbs and all that stuff. A lot of them. That's even even their houses. A lot of them renting stuff like that. But let me ask you real quick a controversial question because we're talking about uh -huh. now we're talking about reality shows and how this stuff is influencing things. I've noticed uh -huh. right in these mega churches right. now. You have spiritual yeah. leaders and pastors now. They want to be superstars now. They're starting the reality shows. And stuff oh, yeah. The preachers, so, of, preachers of L.A. All types of stuff. I ain't going to just single them out because it could be a local It could be a local yeah. church. They have these grand, these, like you said, these grandioso dreams. And it's like, yo, I'm the superstar. I want to get me a jet. I want a private jet. I got to have the new car. I got to have this. So let me ask you. All right. So now you're the leader. Well, the man, woman, you're in leadership, you're in the ministry. How easy is it to slip over when people tell you, you're so great, you're the man of God, you're the woman of God, you're so anointed, you so dot, 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 dot. Now it's like almost like rub my belly, rub my belly, rubbing your dog and his tail is wagging. After a while, you become, it starts to become normal now. So you start to expect it now. So now feeding that. So it's like now the higher you go, we got more members. Now we need 1,500 members. This church just, they just did groundbreaking. Now we got to get, we got a groundbreak. They got a new car. We need a new car. They got a seven bedroom house. I need an eight bedroom house. How easy is it to start off with a good vision and trying to do the right thing? Because we talk, it all goes back to spirits. It all goes back to even Satan who had the highest position, but because of the same thing, lost everything. And, 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 and speaking of that, Satan was the, the first the first true narcissist. Right. He really was the first true narcissist. But he, he wasn't abused. Right. In his mind, you know, he, he he was, but he really truly was the first, the first case of, of narcissism that the world had ever, you know, seen. Right. And now he makes his way of, of, of bringing others to his point. But I think it's very easy for people to get caught up in that. And the reason that I say that with churches is because I don't think that everybody that steps in a pulpit was called by God to do it. Right. Right. Everybody church is big business. Big business. To and, and so, you know, I urge people who go to church who are Christians to pray for discernment about finding a home church. Right. Definitely. You know, you the, the man in the pulpit is still a man. At the end of the day. Still a man. And if he doesn't model and exemplify everything that he that, that comes out of that book to the best of his ability, right. because he's still a man, it's gonna be flawed. But to the best of his ability, then that's a problem. Right. 
I mean, like blatantly, but I do think it's easy for people to get too much praise and too much admiration. And that's why you need to have people around you to help keep you humble. You need to have that relationship with God if you've been called by God to lead a church. You should have that connection with God that you're constantly praying about being able to remain humble and to have humility and to display that at all times. Right. And you know, when somebody says, oh, you know, you're the man, no, you know, I just, I'm doing what God wants me to do. You right. always, and I, in, in those situations, you know, we should always give glory and honor to God. But I think in those situations, when people come at you like that, you always have to reference it and give it, give the glory to God. For it. Right. Because we know that, you know, Moses, he didn't do that that one time. And that one time caused him his his entryway into the you know into the promised land. Right. So, you know, God will use who he who you know he loves to use those of us that have been broken, those of us who who who, who have terrible backgrounds, and to show the world that you know I can I can save this person, right. and this person can be a new creature, and I can use that individual for my glory. You know, so I think we have to remind people to be humble. Be humble. We have to remind people to, to hey, hey, hey. You know, I like to say my I feel like my husband's the most humble person. I know. Sometimes I think he's more humble than me. And I've been in situations where I'm like, you're not gonna he's like, no. And I'm like, but I think the truth is like, no, you know, I'm not gonna buy. You know, so <laughs> I, I I pray for it. I pray for it. I know that I could probably have more humility than I do, but that's something that I'm aware of. But I think my humility in areas, you know, I'm not on social media like that. I'm not, I don't, you know, I don't get a kick out of that stuff. They don't do that. You know, but for other people, it does. And I look at the stuff that people post. And I look at the stuff that people post. Sometimes I'm like, when I go for it, I'm a little nice little scroll. I give it about a day. It's when it is, I'm scrolling through it. Like, okay, I'm going to get to this one. I'm going to get to this one. And then if I like it, I like it. But if they ain't getting like, hey, I, I got off. I'm right. You know, because I think that we should have connections with people outside. Right. I think that social media should be for the people that you don't have that connection with, that you can't be with, or right. you know, you don't live around a corner. We can't get together. We can't hang out. You know, I can't see you all the time. Right. You know. Definitely. But the, the devil himself was a narcissist. Right. Continues to be a narcissist. Right. And it's very natural. So I think that when we look at people, we need to look at how much people put an emphasis on certain things. Right. So when we talk about understanding and identifying, that's my that's my biggest one. Right. Like we know that narcissists, we're gonna run it down again, but we know that they don't have any empathy. We know right. that they lack zero empathy. We know that they have a need for admiration. They want the wow. praise. They want to be seen. They want you to say, good job. They want you to marvel at them. But they needed to feed the ego. Right. Because that's what makes them feel whole. See, that's why the supply, we we'll talk about the narcissist supply. Right. They need the ego constantly fat. They need to feel reassured and validated because they don't, they don't have that substance. They never got it. Right. They never got what they truly needed to feel whole as a, as a, as a well-rounded individual. Right. So because they'll never get it in the traditional sense because they're never going to let you see them at all. They want it in the light that they can get it. Right. So right. that's why it's going to constantly be a I need a massive supply source of me. So for male narcissists, I'd like to say you, you should see them hang out with women. Right. And they may have some male friends. They'll have a handful, you know. Right. But right. there'll be a there'll be a handful of maybe some really good friends. Right. The rest of it is gonna be I need that supply from women. Right. Same thing for women narcissists. I maybe have a handful of females. But I need that supply from them. Right. Because the opposite sex is more likely to validate. The opposite right. sex is more likely to give you that admiration because from physical appearance that they're putting you 
and all of that, they're going to attract them. Now, remember when I said they're charms. They're smart. Don't right. get it twisted. I mean, Ted Bundy was very smart. He was in politics. He spoke Chinese. You know, he, he had accolades for days. Right. But at that time, he had his serial killer. Shop, you know, cut people up. Right. But even, even, uh, the lady, what, the lady day in? Come on, I was why are you people names when I come on the show? I need to get my life together when it comes in. But the lady didn't work with the crisis center. She wrote the book. She wrote the book. Uh, she wrote the book sitting behind uh, or sitting next to the the, the, the the devil beside me. Something. Wow. But she wrote the and wrote, and wrote. She wrote the book about working with the crisis center with Ted Bundy. And she was like, I never would have known. She was like, it's a pleasure to be with him. People always said that he was a pleasure to be with him. Right. You know, he was very charming. He was, he, you know, in settings, he could be very social. Right. So, he seemed like a straight up regular dude. All the girls were like, who they wanted to date him? Not even knowing. And then, you know, here, this is what you get. Right. So, that's why I said, well, be careful what you put your emphasis in. Because a lot of times the outside may be great, but the inside can be very rotten. Yeah. You know, we, 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 we forget. We forget. You know, we always talk about what we want. Especially, you know, we, we can apply it back to day. You want your six figure man. You want to make X and Be careful what you ask for. Be careful what you ask for. Because he could be a narcissist. Pedophiles, we didn't molest them, all that. But see, the narcissist, the narcissist poses something to you, mm. right? Mm. Because when we look at relationships, or we're looking for something that we need, that we want to connect with, right? right you right. know, there's a balance between you know the man and the woman in the relationship. She, I got something he needs, she got something I need. You know, right. we, but the narcissist knows that you see it. They mirror stability for you. And for women that are broken, this is a perfect, uh, this is like a perfect man for you. Yeah. He appears to be financially stable. He's very attractive. You know, yeah. he's got accolades. You know, but where does the flaws at? When you start seeing the flaws, you're trying to justify it because, like I said, he's going to justify it. Right. The narcissist could have. And on four kids by four different women. That's a red flag. Why? Right. No stability. No stability. Well, what, 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 what was it about that, that, you know, explain that to me. Oh, right. well, you know, it doesn't work out because of it. So if you start hearing them, they start blaming everybody else. Right. But a lot of times, you're still looking at what you see. Okay. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe he right. Right. Or maybe he just don't want to go and get into it. Right. But he's going to tell you what you want to hear in the beginning. Then once he got your hook, line, and sinker, oh, that goes out the window. They go out the window. I mean, they, then they say, I've been like this the whole time. You knew what you was getting into. That's it. Look, they can be pretty, pretty beautiful in the beginning. You don't stop telling you that. Right. They going to turn that cold on because they need to go and shock. So gaslighting is a form of mind control. Right. It's extreme brainwashing is what it is. But that's why they use the hot and cold method. I need to shock you. I need to get you, I need to get you primed up and ready for what's about to happen. Because you're playing my game. Right. I'm not playing yours. And they'll tell you, oh, I, you know, we're gonna be together. And then they're gonna tell you why they can't be with you. And you're going to be like, you know what I'm saying? You're going to be like, what? Right. <laughs> but it's going to be a constant back and forth. Right. I can't do it. I want to do it. I can't do it. Maybe we could do it. And, that, and but, but a lot of that is what I see. And that's the reason I'm using that is because you hear a lot of the stories about people being in, well, trying to be in romantic, intimate relationships 
with narcissists. This is where you actually see the work being done. Now, you can see it at your job. Right. Like I said, your boss is hot and cold. But the most often that we see it is in the relationship aspect when they're with others. And they lack and they have no empathy for you. Right. You could be going through. But they want they want to be able to save you, but they don't actually identify right. with what you're feeling. So when you say, you know, I love you, or you're trying to have a deep emotional, vulnerable conversation, they're not going to have that with you because they don't have the empathy to be able to do that for it to come off genuine. Right. But they will tell you something personal maybe about themselves that's going to give you, to give them sympathy and empathy. But it's going to come at a random time. Right. And you don't think, oh, that was just a piece of vulnerability. No, no it wasn't. It was strategic. Because everything they do is strategic. They play you like they play in chess, you play in checkers. You're not ready for them. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you really got to look at, and I feel bad for the narcissist. Right. Like wholeheartedly, because I look at it from a psychological standpoint, I feel very bad for the narcissist. Right. I feel bad that that child is wounded and hurt. And that this is all that all they think that they're great at is what they have accumulated and what they can show the world. Right. But they never want to show themselves. And I think that that's I think that's very sad. Right. You know, and, and that's why, you know, I tell when I would work with kids, I would tell parents, you gotta have a good balance. You gotta be careful how you handle your children. Even when it comes to them dressing and going through that phase for themselves. And I have to catch myself sometimes with that, right? right. <laughs> sometimes my kids want to put on just, I'd be like, they don't even go together. Why Why would you come downstairs looking like this? But I have to catch myself and say to myself, am I wrong? Why, why do I want them to change? They are. Right? Am I worried about what somebody else is? Because you're like, I want my kids to be presentable. You know what I'm saying? I want my kids right. going out and looking crazy. But then I had to catch, and one day I caught myself and I was like, wow. They close the clean. If he wants to wear these sweatpants with with this dang on t shirt, why can't he? Right. Why, why am I who am I why am I telling you that? And in, and in my mind, I would try to justify it by saying, you know, this is where we're going, so you got to look this way. Right. But then again, are we going back to the appearance? Right. And, I think that's just, and I have to catch myself, because I overthink a lot of things in my head, too. Right, now I understand. So I'd be like, okay, I want my kids to understand what is appropriate, what's not appropriate. I want you to understand social settings and things like that. But I do have to catch myself sometimes right. and be like, they need to be comfortable. If he's comfortable being this way, He's being true to himself. He's not changing anything. Right. But if I try to change it, what message am I am I sending you? And then what is that going to do to your psyche as you get older? Wow. And and that's funny that you say that because my um four and two year old, like we we tried something different with them. Uh -huh. They got their own clothes and they got their <laughs> own styles and stuff like that. But it's like some of the stuff they be picking, right? It's like like my son, he got these monster feet slippers. They have slippers. But it's like for some reason them them his go-to shoes. So it's like it we, we, like going, we could go to church. He want them to like it just ain't right. Like I got the I got the dress shoes, I got the Nikes. He's two years old. I want my I want my monster slippers. So it's like, you know, then you, you like you said in the beginning, nah, you gotta put this on, don't wear that. But I want them to be able to express themselves. I want them to be free thinkers. I want them to be not because I dealt with esteem. I dealt with what people are going to think. So I'm trying to break that in them. So it's like the funny story about it. We went to the beach. So I, I made a deal with them. I said, I'm going to pick out this. I'm going to let y'all pick out my shoes. Right. So I posted the picture up with the shoes and everybody had the jokes. Everybody had the jokes. 
You but did that was the story behind the shoes because like if I get y'all to wear this, I'll right. let y'all pick. So when I'm going to pick out my shoes, I would have got some air shocks or you know some regular shock water shoes. Right. My son and my daughter, they want they they wouldn't let them shoes down. We want these. We want you to get these. We want you to get these. So as a dad, I'm like I'm gonna be vulnerable. I'm gonna let the kids pick me. It's gonna be cute. Man, people are still joking me about them shoes, but for them it's worth it because it's like right. I gotta I gotta be able to so like you said, not be embarrassed by their personality. Like if he wanted to right. dress up like a superhero, that's his imagination. It's like you know, people may say, Well, why is he dressed like a superhero? Right. He's a time fighter. You know, we we as the parents sometimes we destroy that imagination. You, know, you ain't fighting no crime, ain't that, that, that. now there is like okay, this is my dream. Sure. Right. So it's like that was the funny thing. So when you were saying that, even with the kids and their personalities and stuff like that, it starts even in that age because it's like, you know, they may be animated. They may just be running around singing all the time. You cut all that noise out. You're shutting down the expert. This is who they are. Or they may dress, you know, they might want to, you know, my four year old, she's a princess every day. You, every day is a birthday. You can't bring out no kick around the, none of that because, oh, it's my birthday. No, it's daddy's birthday today. <laughs> okay, so it's me and daddy's birthday. All right, you know, she, she's the baby girl, so you 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 get it. But it's like with her, right? She'll wear her clothes or whatever. But it's a certain time of day now. I want to put on my princess dresses because you know you get to dress up clothes mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And it's like, and I learned to watch her. And it's like it's like when she's regular, she's playing, she's a little tomboy, she's doing. But when she put her princess dress on, she looks in the mirror. She looks at herself and she says, Daddy, I'm beautiful. She correlates that to the cartoons that she watches. Mm -hmm. Because in most of, the, most of the cartoons, the princess is the star, this, that, and the third. So it's like in her yeah. dress, she feels beautiful. And it's mm -hmm. like, we're going, we're going the food line. Why are you putting on this Disney dress <laughs> with the crown? But it, to her, I feel beautiful. So it's like, yo, I've learned to embrace that. Not in a sense where it's like she's doing it out of attention, but like, this is who I am. This is how I like to express myself. So now it tickles me right. when we go other places or we got other family members. In, or she may go to her aunt house or she may go, you know, with her mom or they, and she comes back. And they say, yo, she wouldn't put that princess dress down. And then because the, she's going to put the crown and everything. Right. And I'm laughing because she's fighting for what she wants. She's fighting for her identity, mm -hmm. even at four mm -hmm. years old. So yeah. when they come back and they're like, and I tried to take that, she had a fit. And in my mind, I'm thinking because that princess crown to her represents mm -hmm. I'm beautiful. Mm -hmm. So it, it's funny when they come back and they're like, and yeah, or the son with the shoes. Mm -hmm. Because that's his com he's most comfortable. Right. In those shoes, but it's like as adults, sometimes it's like we we get rushed out of our creative, our creative thought or we're our imagination. It's like yes. kids have a great imagination. As we get old, it's hard for us to yes. pretend or imagine. So it's like it's hard yes. to be creative. But if if as parents, if we if we nourish that, mm -hmm. they'll be great thinkers later. But it's like when we put limits, like, no, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that, mm -hmm. it hardens them. So later on in life is like, yo, I had somebody hit me and I, I know I'm rambling a little bit. I had somebody hit me today. And since I've been doing the show, I've been learning to smile a little more, you know, be happy, you know, show positive. But I'm from an era where right. we didn't do that. We just, right. you know, we, I ain't going to say mean mug, but it's like my face was my face. It's just. That's it. And I'm, and I'm noticing now when I'm on the show, right, I'm smiling and I'm doing it. But when I'm out and about. I'm, I'm, and I had somebody, I never noticed this. Somebody inboxed me yesterday because I was on a set yesterday shooting a video. And they said, You need to practice smiling more. And I said, I smile all the time, but I'm thinking about on the show. I smile all the time. Like, what do you mean? They say, Yeah, but when you're on the set, you look so serious. It says, like, Yo, when you're on that show and you're smiling, that's it. It's so it's so warm. Yeah, yeah, the warmest smile, like it's just welcoming, and it's like you know, and, and, and they tried to gaslight me. So you even almost had some when you smile. 
<laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. So, you know, by, by butter me up a little bit. So yeah, now I, I, I finish it. Now I'm thinking about it. Like, yo, am I really, am I really ice grilling people when I'm walking around? But it's like, now that I think about it, because it's been brought to my attention, mm. me out just walking around, smiling, he, 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 I'm feeling goofy. Like, yo, that's goofy to me. Like, yo, what the, somebody come in smiling at me, what the hell is wrong with homeboy? Right. But it's like, those are the cycles that we got to break. But it's like criticism. Right. Where it's like, that person would have never said, yo, you, you should smile more. Smile more. I smile all the time. But it's like, when you think about it, really. Right. Are you smiling? Yeah. So when, when it hit me like that, it's like, I have to be more mindful. Right. Because I'm not angry. I'm not in the point in my life where I'm mad. It's like, that was just something we grew up in the 90s, 2000s, where it's like, you just, that was your face. But yeah. it's like, you're a grown oh, man. You ain't in the 90s. My husband has one of those faces. You know, he just. We, we yeah, was in the same neighborhood. <laughs> we from the same. Had one of those faces. And people, and people will ask me all the time, like, is, is he mean? Like, is he approachable? Uh, hi. Hi. How you doing? And he'll, you know, ask if, he, if you know, he's approachable. And I'm like, it's just a face. Like. It's just his face. Like, if there's nothing going on, that's the face you're going to get. I'm sorry. I don't know. What to say. But he's very approachable. Right. You know, sometimes. Yeah. yeah I just don't don't bring no foolishness now. You can I'm approach him, but don't approach, approach no foolishness. I love you, but he's approachable sometimes. Right. As long as they ain't coming with no foolishness now, they bring some yeah. foolishness. And that's a whole nother ballgame. So that's, <laughs> that's a whole nother ballgame. I'm going to tell you a quick story. We went out the other night to the show. Now yeah. I'm thinking Sion mode, right? So I got my jewelry, I got my glasses, I got everything, right? Somehow along the way, I'm ready to go. I'm like, yo, I'm about to step yeah. in. I ain't been out in the wild. Yo, it's about to go down, right? right. He's waiting for me. So I'm, I'm coming up to the ramp. I just want to throw out that he was mad at me because I made him put one of my new chairs together for he, for wow. he left. So he was fussing me out. <laughs> fussing me out, boy. <laughs> Uh bet. So yeah, I get there and I'm like, I, I had a moment where it's like, what the hell are you doing? Like, what do you got all this stuff on? This, that, and the third is like, yo, based on where you at in life right now, like, yo, that ain't right. you, bro. You going through a struggle right now. Like, yo, what what are you doing? But it's like if I the way I'm looking, is I look the part, I'm the rapper, everything is right. going on, and it's like Ready to knowing go. I'm about to get, he's gonna look at me and be like, yo, what the, what the hell is this? So it was like, it made me check myself. Like, yeah, you know what? Like, I'm not that guy anymore. I'm not that insecure guy. I don't have to do all this stuff. So it was like, I began to start taking stuff off. So I took off my watch. So he never noticed. So I take off my watch. I'm coming. I'm like, maybe I just wear the chain and the glasses. <laughs> Go up the next. Yeah, take the chain off. By the time I got to him, right, I don't have no jewelry on. I get out of the car. Yo, what's up? Yo, da, 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 da. But that's the type of realness he is. I know you. I know you, Sai. He's right. not even gonna call me Sai. He's gonna say, I know you, Q. Yeah. It was like, what are you doing, yo? You going in here faking a funk for what? For people to okay, he's dot 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 dot. And it's like, you know, if that's who you are and that's that's you're comfortable doing that, fine. But it's like I know you as how I am right now. And here most often, you know what's funny that you say that. Is you know over the years, yes, I've, I I like to buy him jewelry and things like that. Right. He'll he'll wear it, but he'll tuck it in. He'll tuck it in. You can't even see it. He'll be like, "It's on." I know it's on. Right. There's a there's a few occasions where maybe he'll let it dangle. He'll let it out, but most of the time, it's it's on, but only he knows that it's there. Right. And that's just the kind of dude he is. And 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 that's, and that's the thing that you know we want to we want to encourage people to be. Is that we want to encourage people to just be comfortable in their own skin, right? You know that's what, that's why I always say you know do you, but do it for you. Do it for you. Do it for you. You know, and if and if somebody didn't give us something, and we know, like you know, I take the opportunity every time that I come in contact with people. If the conversations go there, you know, I'm always an ear. I'm always there to help. But I encourage people all the time to do you. Like, I'm not going to do what I don't normally do. Right. You're not going to get me to come out of character and do, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. be true to yourself. If I don't, I don't club, you're not going to catch me going into it. 
Now I'll go to a salsa club if it's a dance club, if it's if we did a dance, but if it's one of those you had to post up against the wall because everybody mean muggy and ain't nobody comfortable to have them. I don't want to fight for what? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like you you gotta be true to who you are and what you want. And be open. And we gotta stop being afraid to allow ourselves to be real and vulnerable every once in a while with people. Right. You know, with social media, I'm not asking everybody to be vulnerable all the time because that's that's not real. No, not real. Not but I that. think that we should be more real. We shouldn't have to showboat. We shouldn't have to seek for people to like things. I posted things and people have never liked. I posted other things and people will love it. Right. And I have learned that difference because I did it for an experiment. Right. I did it on purpose. Right. right. And it lets me know, okay, this is where you this is where this is where society thinks. This is how the brain works. Right. So you're showing me that, that you your you know what I'm saying? My you know, people that some of the people I'm friends with, okay, you're superficial. Right. You're on the surface. Because anything deep that I post, no connection. There may be a handful, or no one will like. Right. And that's okay. But I'm naturally a deep person. Wow. They're like my nature. They, there's nothing superficial about. Me. Right. That, that I'm aware. Of. I may be being biased to myself, but that I'm aware. Of. Right. So I just think that if the if if people would do more of that. We would see less of some of the superficialness that we see on social media. Right. We kind of rein that back in, right? right? Just like we heard about that whole TikTok thing about black TikTok. You know, it's it's the, the, the whole social media. Everybody tough. We all tough behind these little these little, these little, little Twitter figures. I mean, people text faster than they. Then they can read. Right. Right. You text faster than you can damn walk. Like, right. Come on. We 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 gotta we gotta do better. Okay. Um we gotta do better. And 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 we can really we can really lower the superficial narcissism by not feeding into it. Not feeding into it. And then the well, real narcissists don't feed into it. But a real narcissist, like I said, is a whole nother is a whole nother monster. I'm surprised we ain't had no questions. I was waiting for somebody to ask me something. Ain't right. nobody asked me nothing. <laughs> nah, ain't nobody asked some questions today. I thought we was gonna have some questions too, but it's definitely I a dope did. topic. And if they, they put them in the comments, we might have to touch on it on the next one. Cause you know, sometimes people see it on the playback, they may catch it later. And they might I just I kind of was geared for some questions because I was thinking like. Ooh, that'll segue into this or that'll segue into that. And it, so I that might have been my mistake thinking that y'all was gonna ask me something, but one so let, me ask ask you, let me ask you a question. What was the okay. question that what was the question that you thought somebody would ask that you was waiting for? I didn't have like one in specific. I just thought that somebody would ask something. Okay. You okay. know, because it just kind of opens the form up a little bit, you know. Um when you're talking about narcissism, you know, usually it's one of those kind of floaty things where you do, you get people to ask a lot of questions, right. you know, um, what are signs of, you know, signs or symptoms, you know, what kind of treatments are available, you know, um, are they ever going to change? You know, that's the, that's the common question that we get asked a lot. Like, right. will they ever, will they ever change? Will they ever get better? And it's like, I want to, I want to be optimistic. You know, I think that anybody has anything is possible with God. Right. You know, but from what we know, no. Wow. You know, we we know that narcissism is is just what it is. And it's an unfortunate thing that it exists the way that it does. Right. Um but yeah, I just I don't know. This is the first show that we haven't really had a whole lot of comments, and I was I was kind of just I was kind of surprised. All right, yeah, I mean we're gonna keep it going though. But it's like, let me ask you, okay? So narcissism, you don't just fall into that overnight, right? No. So you go through the pride, you go through ego, a lot of different things, the damage to get to narcissism. 
Yeah. What are some of the what are some of the steps to becoming a narcissist? So with the trauma, right? So a lot of times we know that the trauma is induced by parents. Right. Lack of parents, but more commonly parental abuse, neglect on a severe side, or the parents only praising, you know, quality attributes, right? Right. behaviors, things that they want you to demonstrate. So I think really what happens is the way the learned behavior in the brain kind of clicks because it's reinforcement. Wow. You're reinforcing that train of thought. You're, re you're, you're, you're training them to respond to a certain thing. So I think with the trauma on the ass on the on the end of, and we can look at it from this way when we say, okay, you're 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 constantly, you know, giving your kids, you know, you're you're not paying them any attention, you're verbally abusing them, you're you're being very distant, you're being very cold. <clears throat> at some point with all trauma, right? And talking about like brain like brainwashing, uh MK ultra kind of techniques can be the same thing. We can see this even in regular trauma, but the the brain kind of splits. It has to defend itself. Wow. So when you're dealing with so when you're dealing with children, there has to be a sense of trying to preserve that. Right. So the e they, they they'll build the altar, the ego. So now if I rebrand myself then I shield myself from this. Right. So the narcissist is truly trying to shield himself, him or herself. They're trying to shield that child that never, that never, that never got <clears throat> the right balance. Right. And if a parent is running from you, if a parent is <clears throat> doesn't want anything to do with you, that's that's like really like you know one of the worst psychological emotional experiences a person can go through. Right. right. So they're just trying to create someone new. <coughs> but the problem with creating someone new is that new person doesn't have any substance. It doesn't have any memory. It doesn't have any. It doesn't have any personality. It doesn't have any substance to it. Right. It's just like when we create a false reality. It may have certain things, but where's the actual substance? You know, we as people, we have the memories, the experience, the substance, the, the depth the, of all the things that we've been through. But if you want to shield that and put that in a bubble and recreate something else, what's on the surface doesn't have any memory. Right. It doesn't have any substance. It will as it starts to, you know, as you start to transition and, you know, you continue to grow in this facade. But to really get deep, there's only so deep you can go with the new with the new package of the of the person that's the narcissist. Right. Because everything stems back. Right. You know, we, we always talk about our childhood. You know, when I was a kid. And you look back and you can see how much that has shaped you. Even when you become an adult or a young adolescent or early adult and you kind of navigate through life, you know, you'll still recall things that happened in your childhood or my mom did or my dad did or, you know, my grandfather. You know, you, you kind of recall some of those things. Right. Moments and nostalgia that kind of help navigate us through certain choices and decisions. It's the foundation of everything is the child. Wow. It's a core foundation. Right. So if you if you if you don't if you try to block that out, what do you get? Right. So they're not gonna they don't have anything to give you. And since they never were shown empathy, they never learned how to give empathy. You never taught them any love. So they'll never they'll never know how to give or or you know give to receive it. Right. So when they receive it, it's a great feeling. They don't know how to how to genuinely give that back to you. Wow. So they they duplicate the, the abuse pretty much, the cycle. Right. So 
they know, and I'm not, and, and, and you know, some people will say, you know, I think narcissists, <clears throat> I think when, when people get too close to narcissists and narcissists want to push them away and they kind of have like, sometimes you'll see them have like this meltdown, you know, I don't know how, or I don't know what to do. Right. I believe that. I think that's genuine. Right. They don't know close. how to do you didn't, you didn't got too close. You didn't fry like because you didn't got past my barrier. Because they're afraid to be seen. Because I think if you truly see them, you're gonna dislike what you see. Because they dislike what they see. Right. Because they're ashamed of what they see. How can anybody love that if my own mother or father didn't love? So when you start really kind of processing like how they actually like what I can't imagine what goes on in the mind when they're alone. And that's why a lot of narcissists don't like to be by themselves. They don't want to be around. They can't deal with themselves. No. <laughs> the brain is like a, a, a million miles an hour. Right. That's why I said if, if, if they say, hey, let's go away and you say no, they got to try to find somebody else to replace you with. And a lot of times that's why they're angry. Right. But if they make plans with you and they cancel on you, it's because they got a new supply. They want to get the new supply. Right. Because they'll rotate their supply. Wow. I'll, you, I'll be with you for a little while. Then something going to happen or I'll make you mad on purpose or whatever. Right. Then we'll have a little fight and not get in with this new supply and the new supply. But a lot of times they'll try to recycle what they already know, because not all narcissists, no matter how charming and persuasive and all of that they are, they're not as social as you think that they are. Right. Because they fall in the same category with antisocial personality behavior, personality disorder. So that lets you know that they're social, but to an extent. Right. They know how to, but they're only comfortable with people that they've already done that with. So narcissists will try to resupply people that have been in their circle for years. Wow. And so they'll go back to that. They'll go back five, six years and be like, hey, how you? You know, what's going on with you now? And try to reach out and try to reconnect and try to suck you back in. Right. They just want to recycle. Damn. But they'll find ways of meeting people, you know, right. dating apps, things like that, where they can, you know, do the facade. But a lot of times, it won't be as face to face, right? Tangible, and usually, if it is, it's a lot of times the woman is drawn, or or, or you know the man is drawn because of the physical attributes. Right. I would. So let me ask for the person that might be watching. Right. Mm -hmm. They see. They see the symptoms. They see the signs, and they're thinking, it ain't the next person. It ain't them. It's me. That's me all day. I, I deal with these signs. Like I see myself in the symptoms. I see myself in what y'all are saying. What advice do you have for that person? That first, you know, I'm sorry that you're experiencing those symptoms and that I empathize um, with anyone with any kind of trauma. And, you know, but it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be set in stone. We don't have to live with the residue of trauma. And so I would strongly urge them to, if they're not comfortable even going in and seeing a face-to-face, -face, you know, outpatient therapist, you can even, you know, look up look up an um, an online therapist. A lot of those they do the talk text therapies. They got over the phone therapies. Um, so there's a place where you can just start, and those are just a Google click away, you know. But really, just start the process. Get yourself evaluated. Be honest on your evaluation, and then just take it one day at a time. Mm -hmm. Because the first step is progress, and every day is progress after that. Right. That's fine. You know, and, and that's why I said a lot of people, you know, we understand. And like I said, there's a lot of there's a lot of information out there about narcissists. 
that there really is. I mean, this is this is this is one of the more common personality disorders that we see people deal with today. Um, it's not as uncommon as it was before. Right. It just it just isn't. Um. But I, I like I said, I feel bad because I understand that it is trauma induced. Right. You know you you. you but I learned to empathize, but I know that if I had to come in contact with a narcissist, you can't give them that. Right. You can't give them that. They're trying to, they're trying to take you in, roll you out, spit you out, chew you out. <laughs> Boy, a narcissist will suck you of everything you got and have you, like I said, it will leave you a shell of a human being. Wow. Because they're going to hot and cold you to death. Right. You're going to start to feel like you're going crazy in your own head. Why won't they be honest? Why won't they? Because they're never going to. Right. And the reality is, is that you have to accept the people who are watching that may love a narcissist or have been involved with a narcissist. You got to let that go. You got to let that go. There's nothing that you can do that's going to fix that level of damage in them. Wow. You don't, ha you don't have it. And they don't want it. Right. That's another key thing with most of them. They don't want it. Right. They have grown accustomed to the to the reality that they have created. They have grown accustomed to the facade they have built. They 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 do not, they are not brain and hardwired like you and I. They're not. Wow. They're just everything in everybody is a pawn. Everybody serves a purpose. Their children serve a purpose. Like I said, family members serve a purpose. Boy, they will they will do for the family just so that other people can say, man, look at you, go ahead and do that. Right. That's so yeah. nice that you did that. And it's affirmation that you're giving them. Right. So. They don't care about the legit fact that they did it for them. It's about somebody else being able to see that they did it. And that's the thing. Let me ask a question then. Is it rare that two narcissists together? Oh, two, yeah. You ain't, you ain't going to catch that. That ain't going to happen. So can somebody, yeah. you know, when they say we transfer spirits and stuff like that, can a person learn and start because they're being abused from the narcissist now? It may be like a tit for tat thing. And now they start operating in narcissism. <sighs> No, no, because narcissism, like I said, it starts early adolescence to adulthood and it's it's related to childhood trauma. Like I said, now you can mirror uh, some some of the behaviors of a narcissist, right. you know, but to be a classic true narcissist, their legit brain is hardwired. They, they're, they're, right. they're wired differently because of the trauma. They're just wired differently. And every kid that has been through that doesn't necessarily become that way. And that's why we find the psychology of people so interesting because you, it really does become an individual case-by-case -case basis. Like, you can sit here and break down all these different disorders, you know, and look at things differently. And two people can go through the same exact thing, and one's going to turn out this way, and the other one may turn out the other way. Right. It, it, it never, because our responses to things are different. Just like I said, the, the boy that was raised as a dog. Right. You read the story. You know what I'm saying? Or the kid that, you know, his mother was, you know, scalding him with hot water and bleach and then, you know, putting him in the basement. <clears throat> Wasn't feeding him. When he did things wrong, she'd make him touch a hot stove. I mean, she turned the stove on hot and make him put his hand to it. Yeah, nah. You know what I'm saying? So he didn't turn out that way. Now, yeah, he had some serious trauma and some things to work through when he finally was able, when he was rescued <laughs> and able to get some help. Right. But he didn't turn out that way. Right. But that was a lot of process. But that's Definitely. with somebody else, that's easy for them to, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's environmental even every way we turn. It's just like being raised in, in the hood. Right. Some people right. make it out the hood. Some people choose to stay in the hood and set up. We, we 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 all have choices, right. but <clears throat> we're affected and and we respond to certain things differently based on our own personality traits, based on our resiliency to things, based on what we've already learned, based on you know level of support, uh, 
you know, there, there's so many different variables that play a role in whether or not how we're going to bounce back. Right. And, and that's the thing you said. It's like, you know, it's trial by trial because, like, it's based on how they respond. It's because they went through it. Everybody's not going to respond the same. And that's the thing that's so important about the show these trauma series that we're doing because like we touch on the topics right mm -hmm. but it's like it's like branches of a tree where it's like right. okay where this you might have this affects that so it's like ping pong so it all goes back to adolescent traumas and things like that mental issues or not healing mm -hmm. or you know going back to a certain age going back to the root and it's mm -hmm. like one person may be dealing with depression one person may be dealing with anxiety one person may go to full-blown narcissism but it all starts with the same type of things. It all starts with a trauma. Yeah. It all starts with a um, abuse, some kind of way. And it's yeah. like, so if you never mm -hmm. deal with it, it just grows and it grows and it grows. And it's interesting mm -hmm. because it's like when you talk to people that's dealing with certain things, it's like none of them got there the same way. So it's like yeah. this person may, you know, been through abuse with a parent. This person right here might have been in a foster care. This person is like, apples and oranges but it's like you mm -hmm. see the similarities but then you see the differences and that's the thing so it's like when we do these shows when we talk about narcissism it's so hard to put mm -hmm. it in a time limit or to put it in a in a, a because it's so massive it's so big i would tell people if you want to see a story of of true narcissism go to uh if you got if you got if you got discovery <clears throat> If you have the Discovery Plus or whatever, watch the show called Broken Hearts. It's one episode. And it's about um, a couple. Um, they were with two women that were married in a relationship. And they adopted um, <clears throat> three Hispanic kids. They were all siblings. Wow. And then they ended up, but you got to watch the stories. I'm not going to move you for you, but what they right. did with the black kids that they got, that they the kids should have never been here. This is a right. this is a classic situation of system failure. Okay, system failure. Wow. But she, they ended up getting three black siblings. So in all, they 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 don't they 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 adopted, you know, minority children, three who were siblings and the other three who were siblings. Wow. They were true narcissists. Watch how they use these children and the social media, the, the, the followers they had, the likes, the posts, the pictures, but nobody was catching the sign that why is this 14 year old boy body look like he's of an eight year old? Wow. They're starving the children, starving the children. But when you look at pictures of the inside of the house, they had nothing but food, but they would starve the children so bad that the kids were trying to run across to the neighbors in the middle of the night, begging for bread, asking if they could put bread and peanut butter under the fence for them. Wow. You got to watch the story. But anyway, the family, the, 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 when they realized that they were in trouble, right. they gave all the kids a massive, basically enough doses of Benadryl to knock everybody out. And then they drove themselves off of a cliff. Those kids died while they were in their sleep. And it's called Broken Hearts. On the called Broken Hearts. And they spell it H-A-R-T-S because it's how they spell the last name. H-A-R-T-S? Yep, H-A-R-T-S. It's called Broken Hearts. Wow. But it was about the validation, the grandiose behavior, the right. elevated sense of importance, excessive admiration and the lady the one mother that was in control you could tell she was the one like you could tell wow. she was the driving force right but the show really shows that level of of narcissism of narcissistic right. behavior she was she was classic i don't i don't even know like I said, I know this. I know they're charming. I know they're persuasive. But you know, it's like a mental health professional. You know, we should be picking this out. People who are, you know, in the system that are dealing with people should should have figured this out. But the, but the way they tried to, you, you just gotta watch it. I don't want to ruin it for anybody, and I don't want to have any. I don't want to get into too much racial debate. But right, 
it'll show you that, that there is some there is some racial context to it, right? About how the system works and why they were allowed to have those number of minority children without some of the credit checks and without some of the detail was right. because of the privilege. Wow, gotcha. Whereas the family for the black children. They had a place to go. One mistake was made, and they took the kids, and then they gave the kids. The, the state immediately put them up for adoption, which wow. is unheard of. So these kids should still be alive, but right. it, it's but it just goes to show narcissism. It goes to show the breakdown in, 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 the, in the judicial system. It shows the charmingness. It shows all of some of those things that people, you know, you really kind of want to see if you haven't ever seen. Right. But it's 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 just it's it's a really good show, but it's 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 very sad. Wow! And this is based on a true story. Yes, wow. this happened in two thousand and eighteen. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna check that. And you said it's on Dis on Discovery or Discography? No, Discovery Plus. Discovery Plus, Broken Heart. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Like, by, by the next time we have the next show, I definitely we don't watch it, and we'll definitely talk about it on there. Yeah, chop it up because because it you know it it just blows my mind that how much mental illness that is walking around, right? And that we don't and and I know that we're starting to talk about it more. I know it's becoming more of a topic, but why aren't we checking the balances with people? Right. More. Are you okay today? Are you feeling all right today? You know. Uh, a friend of mine recently lost her husband um, and she had posted on social media. We don't live nowhere near each other, but I remember um, that I reached out because I really wanted to legit reach out. Right. You know, um, not just say I'm sending prayers to you on your Facebook page. Right, right, right. Like sometimes people are really going through something and they need for us to pick up the phone. And I know I posted something to my Facebook page. You know, if you're going through something, call me. Right. You know, if you know me, call me. Right. You know, we're here to help. You know, I'm, I, I think that we're running out of, of our humanity. Right. Right. Because we're so, we're so desensitized by what we watch. We're so desensitized by social media. We're so desensitized. And, and fed up with just our everyday lives that we don't extend the hand that we should be extending to each other. Right, I definitely agree. So I think that we need to do more of making ourselves available for people who want help. Right. And that's the thing right there. Let's normalize. Instead of turning up, stay down in the dumps. Let's get drunk. Let's go party. Let's stay in. Let's not drink. Let me listen so you can get it off your chest because yeah. going out and turning up and getting drinks, the situation is still there. Now, now they wasted. You drop them off, you go back home, and they're back in the same boat. Let me tell you something. Ain't nothing worse than and, and I tell people I I don't I can't do drunk people. Right. I can't do drunk folks. Cause I don't drink. Right. <laughs> so when you drunk and you sloppy and you everywhere, I can't, I can't. It's too much. It's, 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 it's too many moving parts for me. I can't do it. Right. You know what I'm saying? I can't. Right. But, you know, you got to... I am I also tell myself, too, to be the example that you want people to model. Right. Facts. I'm not going to go along with you and your BS. And everybody who know me know that. Like, I'm not... I'm, you can't force me to do that. I don't wanna, I'm not... I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, I'm not, about, to, I'm not about to do that. I'm not about to engage in that. It's not what I'm doing. And right. I think we, we need to be honest with people about that. We need to start trying to make, we need to start trying to oh, to validate people in a, in a negative light. Let's validate people in a healthy manner. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let's reinforce positive behaviors and good things that are going to, you know, but reinforcing people to get lit and turn up, mm -hmm. alcohol poisoning, you know, substance abuse. We, we just talked about it. Right. And we just talked about that. Like, you know, you gotta be careful what we what you promote. Right. Right. You gotta not be afraid to go against the grain sometimes and, and be true to yourself. 
And if you're hurting, it's okay to tell people like, look, you know, I, 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 I've been through some things. I need genuine people around. Right. You know, do you know somewhere where I can get some help? Do you know anybody that I can talk to? Right. Like we, we've got to, we've got to do that for each other. And that's real, right? And we gotta not be afraid to show our hands that we all have some. We've all been through something. Oh. You know, I've, I've I've come on this show, and more than once, and I've said, you know, I have trauma in my back. Right. You know, right. Uh, I did say that one day, you know, and I know me and Sia talked about it that I would come on and I would share my story. Right. Um, and I and I still plan to do that. Right. Um, so that people understand, you know. Not alone. That you're not alone. Right. You know, and, and what you see now took work. It took a lot of work. And I'm still working. Still working. Still working. And I want people to understand it because even though you 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 can heal and you can forgive, you don't ever forget. Never forget. And it doesn't mean that sometimes you're not watching something for you know, and, and it just makes you, it, it makes a moment or you still don't have some kind of level of awareness. Like I'm aware of my surroundings a lot more because of some of the things that I've been through. Right. You know, some, some, some things of the residue doesn't always go a hundred percent away. True. I just want people to know that too. Like you don't get rid of all of it. It ain't like, you went to therapy and you got healed and then it was like, oh, I have no recollection. It's all went away and I'm, I'm 100% better. It doesn't work that way. Right. Well, you know, you're, it's going to, it's, it's a part of you. It doesn't have to be a hindrance, but it, it becomes a part of you. Most definitely. And that's the thing right there. So let me ask you, right? Because we, we got so much up under this umbrella, right? Do you yes. think we need to do a part two or do you think um, we're going to move to the next topic? What are we going to do for the next show? I would really like, and, if, and if, if people are interested in wanting to hear more about this topic, I would say, you know, we could definitely do a part two if we could get some, you know, some comments about it, you know, some, some extra additional thoughts. Okay. I'm open. If, if not, you know, we could definitely move on to, to, to the next one. It's, you know, it's open um, I'm open for suggestions. Okay. All right. And that's cool. And the thing is, like I said, because like, I don't want to rush through the topics because there's so, right. so much in there. So many people, it falls and it touches people in so many different ways. Cause like it could be your, you could be the person with the, the suffering from the narcissism, narcissism, narcissistic disorder, mm -hmm. or you could be in a relationship with somebody that's suffering from it. It could be your child. It could be your uncle. It could be your aunt. In so many mm -hmm. different ways that these uh, mental disorders af affect us yes. as a people in our house. So it's like, you know, I don't want to rush through it, but I definitely want to make sure we thoroughly get and we, we never thoroughly touch each topic. But again, well, it's like, I, know, I know if we want to continue to see, if we want to continue to branch off of this, right. I think what we could do is we could categorize it a little differently. Um, I know one uh, Norman, I don't know if he's watching today or not, but I know that he wanted to talk about abusers. Um, and I know that, that was something that we were talking about. And narcissism do, narcissists do fall under that umbrella. Um, but I know that we were talking about uh, spiritual abusers. And um, I think there was another question that he had. There was another type of abuse that we had talked about in that podcast. And I, I have to go back and reference it. But if we want to pick up you know, maybe our next topic moving forward, kind of staying under the umbrella right. would be to talk about different types of abusers. Wow. And we could use that as, you know. Right. As a segue. Mm hmm Yo, that'd be dope right there. And I'm definitely, I'm definitely down with that one right there. For the people that may be watching, right? Yeah. Yeah. They may, we've had the one person say, I know that's me. Mm hmm I want help. I want change. For the person that's listening, and they know that's them, but they they nah, it's, it's everybody else. It's not me. Mm -hmm. What advice do you have for that person? My biggest thing for them is prayer. You know, um, 
I would ask that whatever feelings of shame and guilt and turmoil and trauma that has happened to you as a child um, and, the, and the residue that, that, that you're holding on to that's plaguing the inside of you um, that has turned you cold and, and has made you numb. You know, if if you can find it in in any being, any part of your being to reach out to God right. and give it to him. I think that is the first and most important step. Wow. At, for, for them at this point, because I don't, you know, the, 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 we know, we know what the studies and the research show, right. but there's no change. But yeah. You can't take that from God because God is the healer of all things. God is the the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and He can do anything. Oh, and you. and science ain't got nothing on Him. So I would say that if that if, if if this is you and this is where you are and you are aware, if you can find it in yourself to go before God, do that. Do that first. That's real right there. God That's, says, seek and you shall find. Seek and you shall find. So seek him first. Right. And then, you know, transition your way. If you're open, if you're not, stay there. Right. Continue to navigate yourself with God. But when you do get into a space and a place where you can wholeheartedly be open, Find a good therapist, someone that you're comfortable with, right. tackling some of those layers. Yeah, and that's real right there. And then um, we're going to do the final words. But before we do the final words, I'm going to do a quick prayer right quick. Okay. All right. Father God, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for the show on today, Father God. We thank you for the information that was shared, Father God. For you know all things, Father God. For you know the viewer, Father God, that may be suffering in shame, Father God. For you know the person that may be suffering in silence, Father God. For you know the people that may be being abused, Father God, or you may know the people that are out here doing abusing, Father God. We ask that you touch, Father God, and that you move like only you can move, Father God. We plead the blood of Jesus, Father God, for every house represented, Father God. We thank you for every listener, Father God, for every person that might view the show later, Father God. For you know what they're going through, Father God, whether it be mental issues, Father God, whether they be lonely, Father God, whether they're going through depression, Father God, financial issues, whatever it is, Father God, we lay it all at your feet, Father God. If you said we give it to you, Father God, then you'll do the rest, Father God. And we thank you, Father God. And we intercede for the people that may not have a voice, Father God. We ask that you go into all these foster care systems, Father God. We ask that you go into prisons, Father God. We ask that you touch their hearts and their minds, Father God, because only you can do some things, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, for certain things that people can do on their own and some things that can't be done unless you do it, Father God. We ask that you touch their hearts, prepare them, Father God, to receive your word, Father God, if they don't know you. Father God, give them experience, Father God, that they are treasure forever, Father God, that they know you real, Father God. Reveal yourself to them. Father God, go into the low places, Father God. Go into the crack alleys, Father God. Go into the hotels, Father God, and touch them because we know, Father God, they're trying to get away from some kind of trauma or pain, Father God. Help us to go back to the beginning, Father God, where it all started, Father God. Help us to get through it, Father God. Help us to forgive, Father God. Help us to lay it at your feet, Father God, that we can be delivered from these things that hold us down, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, knowing that it's already done, Father God. You said anything that we ask in your name, Father God, that you'll do, Father God. And when two people come together in your name, you'll be in the midst, Father God. And we come together today, Father God, not asking that you bless us, Father God, not asking for a house and car, Father God. But we're asking that you touch them in their mind, Father God. We ask that you touch them in their need. And we ask that you touch them in their pain, Father God. And we know that it's done in Jesus' name. We give you all the glory and honor. Amen. Amen. Yes, right. Lord. Hey, all right. So you got, any, you got any final words to close it out before we sign off today? Uh, I just want to appreciate everybody who watched the show. Uh, thank you for, for following the series. We really appreciate that. Um, it's been an honor to be on here. 
Um, again, we are always open to suggestions for topics, things that you guys are curious about, things that you want to know. Um, because, you know, you as the viewers, it's for you. Right. So if you guys are interested in something specific being covered, please let us know because we do, we want I want to make sure that, you know, your questions, your answers, your topics are are selected and heard. And um, so I encourage that. Very much so. And that's, but I appreciate y'all having me on again. You know, I appreciate Definitely. it. And we'll be back in two weeks. And again, yeah. if you're watching the pre playback, if you have any comments, be sure to leave them in there and we'll definitely talk about it on the next show or feel free to inbox either one of us and we'll definitely um, bring it up on the show. Again, we thank everybody supporting this trauma series. We thank everybody that's watching. You took your time out, whether you're watching it now or you're watching it later. We thank you for that. And yes. again, this is the proof. This is the trauma series. We love all y'all. We hope that everybody has a blessed week. And when you feel like you're at the end of the rope, reach out to somebody. There's always somebody there that's willing to listen. But if they don't know, that's one of the things. It's like you don't have to suffer in silence when you have people that saying, yo, if you're going through something, you need to talk. Just reach out to me. Sometimes we got to take the first step. So if that's you, take the first step. You don't have to go through it alone. You're not alone. And it's a support It's a support system and people that's been where you're going. So we just ask that you reach out to them. And again, we thank all y'all for viewing us on today. We love yeah. you with the love of God. This is the Proof in the Pudding Podcast show. I go by the name of Sion 919. This was our Trauma Series Part 7 with our psychoeducational therapist, Miss Natalie Collier. And you know she comes real. And we definitely appreciate you coming through the platform. And like always, we thank you for the information. We thank you for the knowledge. And yes, we thank you for thank your you. time. Yes, thank you. All right. And we salute you. As well. I salute y'all. All right. So we'll see them in two weeks again. And we again, yes. this is the proof. And we signing off. We love y'all. Thank you.